When we take care of each other, wonderful things happen. Children thrive, the elderly rejoice, and communities celebrate. OCAF South Africa, a charitable WACAF organization, makes it easy to share the care. All donations are plowed into Sharia compliant investments, while the fruits support a wide variety of charitable causes. Visit okafsa.org.za to discover how your wakaf can bless our community with a legacy of care. Right. Good morning, Sabuna and Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is a hearty and warm welcome to all our learners, educators, and parents. This is the, fi um, the final session of the Grade 12 Math Workshop, which in, um, essentially will prepare you for your final metric math paper. Today we will be focusing on Paper 2, which includes your Euclidean and analytical geometry, as well as a bit of stats. We are coming to you live from the Alphala School in Durban. Now, this workshop is hosted by OPAF SA in association with Alphala College, the Department of Basic Education, the K-Way Institute, and iSkills. I am Tahiya Wadiwala, and I will be your host for today. Let us know in the comments which school you are from and which province you are from. So, I've got a bit of a request from you. Um, as you can see, most of you are joining in through our YouTube channel, Okaf SA. Something seems a bit fishy there. We need to increase those subscribers. So we urge you all to start subscribing to our channel. Let's get us up to 10,000 subscribers soon. Hopefully by the end of today, do you think we could do that? Uh, remember to give our video a like and subscribe to the channel as well. And remember to share this video with others. We now call on um, Ms. Dakota, the facilitator for the session. Remember, Mr. Kota eats, sleeps, and reads these sticky math questions. Actually, no, we're going to change it up. And in fact, we're going to go directly to Mr. Zafar, who is the principal of Al Farah College. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. How are you? I'm well, thanks. How are you? MashaAllah. Welcome. Uh, thank you very much for manning the main studio in the Cape Town area. And we welcome you and uh, all of our students and ones that are sitting live at Alphala College, as well as the many that are online. I hope you had a productive day yesterday and we look forward to another very productive day today, mashallah, uh, with the support of UCAF South Africa, K-Way and uh, iSkills together with Alphala College as a host here. We again uh, look forward to another productive day, inshallah. I wish you all the best going forward for today, inshallah. Thank you, and thank you for all your warm welcome and assistance at Al Fala. Only a pleasure, John. All the best. Thank you. And I think with that, we can jump straight to Mr. Kota, the man of the hour. Mr. Kota, are you there?
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. How are you, Tahia? Waalaikum salam. Well. How are you? Alhamdulillah, all fired up. How's our command center, our nerve center there in Cape Town? Is everybody doing well that side? I think everybody is doing fantastic. Alhamdulillah. Ready alhamdulillah. To start. Right, we're ready to we're ready to get the show on the ground. So just another warm welcome to all the learners that have made it here on time and all our online learners. We've hit the 5,570 mark. We're just encouraging all the learners, tell all your friends to join the live stream. Let's hit the 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, and hopefully by the end of today, the 10,000 online mark. Now remember, this is a game changer. These are record. We, we're setting records here for the number of learners in a single workshop. And this is our final exam prep. So by you all fresh and early this morning, is giving me a good indication that yesterday was a bumper session. Now we ended up yesterday. I got something interesting here, guys. Thank you. Well, what's required for today? Those of you who just joined us today, your scientific calculator, writing pad, stationery, and your hydration, refreshments, and snacks. And uh, yeah, I think we can put up the program. If the program today, we're going to be doing paper two, but I want to finish off what we didn't finish off from paper one yesterday. So although it says 9 a.m. to 10.30 probability, I think we're going we, we to start off with an algebra question yesterday. So we're going to finish at 3 o'clock today. We'll finish all the topics, guys. And uh, I hope you went through all the work that we did yesterday. And did any of you manage... So let's go back to our jam board. Here's Mr. Bart Simpson saying, time for war. Let's go. I hope you guys are all ready for that. Do you guys remember yesterday somebody put up that question that 3 to the A equals 21 to the B? I hope he's uh, live here as well today. And 7 to the C equal 21 to the B. Show that, what was the question? Show that B, show that B is equal to AC over A plus C. Now this was a higher order question yesterday. It was, uh, we were pushed for time, didn't, uh, I didn't have clarity of thought. The minute we finished the program, it took us about 30 seconds to figure it out. But Alhamdulillah, we got it. And uh, let's see, are you live? The gentleman, let's see if the comments come through there. Tahia, maybe you can send, uh, do you guys remember this question, guys? Who was it that sent the question through yesterday? If you're live, if you're online, just hit us up in the comments to say, me, 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 okay. it was me. <laughs> Did it come through there, Taya? I don't see it. Yes, I also I don't, don't see it there on the side, but it's fine. It's fine. I hope that all of you had a chance to give it a go last night. The question was correct, by the way. The question was correct, by the way. Let's go. Let's just check. Right. Okay, so here's some mathematics. Put your pens down. Have a look. So we got 3 to the power A equals 21 to the power B. Now, remember, there's no 3s, there's no 27. So what we need to get rid of, we need to get rid of the 3 and the 21, the 7 and the 21. We need to get rid of it. That's our A. So watch here. And now you've got 7 to the power C is equal to 21 to the power B. Right. Watch what I'm going to do. I want 3 on its own. So I'm going to multiply the power by 1 over A. What I do to the left, I'm going to do to the right. I want to get rid of the C, so I'm going to multiply C by 1 over C. What I do to the left, I'm going to do to the right. So, in fact, what am I going to now have? Watch here. I hope you guys are following. 3 equals 21. B times 1 is B over A. Then I've got 7 is equal to 21 to the power B times 1 is B over C. I'm going to call that one equation number one. I'm going to call that one equation number two. I hope you you know where I'm going with this. Let's check our onliners. Onliners, are I you think all, we are you found the student, Mr. Kota. Did you I found did his you? name up? I popped his name up. Ulisani Mudao. Yay. Welcome, Ulisani. Big uh, shout out to you. Thank you for the question that you sent through yesterday, Ulisani. I hope you're following what I did. I got rid of the power here on this side by multiplying it by its reciprocal. What I do on the left, I do on the right. The same thing I did here. The same thing I did there. I multiplied by 1 over C. I multiplied 
and that gave me that and that gave me that now i multiply the two watch here three times seven is what 21 to the power one is equal to we multiply bases are the same 21 we multiply bases are the same i add the powers so it's b over a plus b over c yes or no now i cancel 21 and 21 so what do i have b over a plus b over c that's that is equal to one my cop so now i'm going to move over here to the side right my common denominator here is AC. AC is equal to 1. There we go. So A will go into there. C times B is BC plus C and C will cancel BA. Now I want B on its own. So I take out B as my highest common factor. I'm left with C plus A over AC is equal to 1. How do I get rid of, so I times this side by BC, AC, I times that side by AC. So B into C plus A is equal to 1 times AC is AC. Bada bing, bada boom. Here's our final answer. Therefore, B equals, I divide by A plus C, I divide by A plus C, I get AC over A plus C. There we go. There's our final answer. Like a boss. <laughs> like a boss. Like well a boss. Right, take it down, take it down, Huli Sani. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I got rid of it. I made the basis the same, simultaneous equations. And then we just worked with the powers and we made B the subject of the formula. So let's check our comments. Huli Sani, Huli Sani, hit us up in the comments. Did you enjoy this one? I hope you enjoyed it. Like a boss, Petolo Mashapa. Mohammed Akil Khan. Lanesha Secondary School. In Diwe Secondary School, Western Cape. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Notando. So that's how you do it, Tina. <laughs> well done, well done, well done. Beautiful. Take it down, take it down, take it down. Take it down. The aim here was to get rid of the 3, the 21, the 7, and the 21. So let me just box it out for you. This was step number 1. That was step number 2. Then we cancel that and cancel that. We were only left with the powers. That's step number 3. And then I moved over there. And that's step number four. And that takes us right to our final answer. Step one, step two, step three, step four. One, two, three, four. And obviously we had to put step number five like a boss. <laughs> <laughs> How's the comments coming in there, Tahir? Well, we decided to post it that you enjoyed it very much. Ah, Hulisani, hope you're enjoying it. I hope you're enjoying it. And I hope some of the teachers that are watching it as well are checking what we've done. Remember, this, uh, these sessions are going to be uploaded onto YouTube. You can go to OCAF website and you can re-watch these sessions over and over and over again. I know how much you love my face. Okay, Sibelius High School, Western Cape. Let's go. Guys, we're now going to start, as I promised you yesterday, we're going to start with finance. So let's go into the financial component. Let's go into the financial component and let's finish the finance. We can leave probability for last. And then we, I want to go after finance, I want to hit paper two. I want to smash it. We're going to smash your boy. <laughs> you know who said that. I'm going to smash your boy. Alhamdulillah. We're going to smash your boy. Best math workshop ever, Kayla. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah means praise be to God. We thank the Almighty all the time for giving us this opportunity for, to be able to engage with you. Remember, we're doing God's work here, bro. We're doing God's work here. We want you guys to become... And we want you to show you this is our involvement with you. And hopefully later on in your life, you'll have involvement with us. 
One day when you become president, you make me the finance minister. While we're at that, I've just posted the QR code for our education Wapa fund. And if you can, please donate to the fund, which enables Okaf to continue doing workshops like this. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. This is a free workshop for you guys, but obviously it needs funds. So you guys can contribute anything. Go on to the website, put a 50 rand, put 100 rand, whatever you want to put. Just contribute to it so that we can further this program for new learners next year and we can expand this program throughout the year for all the different provinces. Alhamdulillah, with all your guys' commitment, we are able now to beam from Cape Town. In two weeks' time, we are beaming from Cape Town, so we're going city to city and we are engaging all the learners in the country. Alhamdulillah, this is the only initiative of its kind in the country. So yes, a big thank you to Okaf South Africa, but all praises to Allah who allowed us this opportunity to engage with you. Okay, so you guys got this one down. Let's get started. Finance. Now, I'm going to put down, many of you don't know what, what finance comprises of. Now, you know, our, before we even start, we got future value and we got present value. Many of you don't know when to use the future value formula, when to use the present value formula. So I want you to rem uh, remember this short acronym, FSPL. FSPL. What does it stand for? Flippant stupid people. <laughs> right. Future value for savings. Future value for savings. Present value for loans. So whenever the question talks about savings, we use future value. Whenever the question talks about loans, we use present value. So just remember FSPL. Write that even when you get into your paper in pencil. Write that on the top, FSPL. So it will help you to remember. If the question talks about savings or sinking fund, SS, we're going to use future value. If it's going to talk about loans, you borrowed money, to buy a car, to buy equipment, to buy a house. You borrowed money, that's a loan, present value. Future value, you're saving for the future. Now let's talk about what do we need to know in finance. Obviously, you need to know depreciation, right? Where you're going to be using logs. Then we need to know future value, present value. There we go. Then we need to know the balance outstanding on a loan. Then we need to know the trading of an asset. When we trade in something, it always comes up in all the papers. Then we need to know the immediate payment. If you pay early, immediate payment, where you pay early. Then we need to know deferred payment where you pay late and then you need to know what we call the final payment. So please make sure you learn all these types, final payment. Now guys, what I am going to do, I'm going to share two PDFs on the OCAF website. I didn't even tell OCAF this. I'm running it by them. I'm going to send two documents with every humanly possible type of question broken up section for section with completed worked out memos. Inshallah, by the time I get back to Joburg tonight, my flight is at nine o'clock. So by tomorrow morning, if you go to Okaf, I'll probably send it to Hassanain and to Tahiyat. Uh, I'm sure they'll be able to create some sort of a, uh, a link or something on, on their website. And I'm going to blast you with all your past papers, question for question, all your calculus together, all your finance together, every humanly possible scenario that you could see. And I'm going to send you another document with completed workout solutions. So that's going to help you out. Sort it out. That means you can click one link. You master that and you master what I taught you yesterday and today. You are sorted. Destination, distinction, your distinction will be guaranteed. Is that a deal? Tahiyah, can we do that? I'm sure that can be done. Where's Tahiyah? Where's my friend? That's perfect. I will Alhamdulillah, we can do that. Fantastic. And that will be what? That will be a fantastic resource. 
It's only two documents. I'm not giving you a whole host of info. I'm giving you two documents. One with all the questions, section for section, one with all the answers. I'll send it through to the to to Okaf this evening via PDF. Okay. Thank you. So we'll be waiting for it. Amin. Jazakallah. So guys, are you excited? Are you excited? Destination distinction. DD. Double dolly. DD. Destination distinction. Right? Not destination, not destination pass. Destination distinction. Right. Let's start with depreciation. Guys, this is topic one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there are seven concepts. We're going to do one of each. And that will be the whole of finance. I don't need to do 10 different examples of each type. Right. Let's go. Depreciation. Very popular question. Let's start off with question number one. What well, topic number one, the depreciation. How long? Guys, how long is the Chinaman's name? How long will it take? I'm asking you. How long is the Chinaman's name? How long is the Chinaman's name? Yeah, how long? I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. How long is his name? <laughs> how long will it take? Uh, dead joke. Shut up. How long will it take for... It's an old man's joke for a motor vehicle, MV, to depreciate to 25% of its original value. I know you've, you guys have all seen this. Original value based on the reducing balance method. Reducing balance method. What's another word for reducing balance method? Diminishing balance method. There we go. For five marks. How long will it take for a motor vehicle to depreciate to 25% of its original value based on the reducing balance method at 15% per annum? So take this one down and let's see some of the studio, uh, some of the comments that are coming through as you guys are taking this question down. How long will it take for MV, motor vehicle, to depreciate to 25% of its original value based on the reducing balance method at 15% per annum? Guys, are you enjoying this? Yes, it is paper one, Junior Maceta. We're just finishing what we didn't finish off yesterday. Then we're doing paper two today, Lirato. Relax. Relax. This is paper one. This is paper one. We're just finishing up what we didn't finish yesterday. And then we will start for, with paper two immediately after we are done with finance. Right. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Right. So all we're going to do, we're going to go A equal P into 1 plus I to the power N. Your original value is P. Uh, and it's not 1 plus, it is diminishing balance method, it is 1 minus. So 1 minus I, 0, 0,15 to the power N. Your A, they say 25% of its original value, so you go 0, 0,25, 25% P. If your original is P, 25% of P is 0, 0,25 P. Now we divide this side by P, we divide that side by P. I'm left with 0, 0,25 is equal to 1 minus 0, 0,15 is 0, 0,85 to the power N. Now what do we use, guys? Logs. So attach a log, attach a log, so N log. Remember, we're going to attach a log, attach a log, and then bring the N in front of the log. So I'm going to move over to the side. N log 0, 0,85 is equal to log 0, 0,25. So now divide by log n equals log 0, 0,25 divided by log 0, 0,85. n equals, what's it? 8,53. Let's check. Log 0, 0,25. Close brackets divided by log 0, 0,85. Boom. 8,53 years. And there we go. 
eight and a half years. It will take eight and a half years. So they possibly they'll, they'll test you on this. These are your templates. These are stuff that you need to memorize. You need to know how to do it. Then you can try all again. I'm telling you, you can try all your higher order questions after the document I sent through to Okaf tonight. Then first master what I show you. Then you start playing around with the higher order questions. Because higher order questions are only 15% of your paper. Hear me out. There's so much of focus that you people are putting on higher order that you're leaving all your basics. This is your bread and butter. Make sure you get your 85. Then you start with your higher order. Many of you are only practicing higher order questions. So you're only getting 15% of your paper. And then to your higher order, you get wrong in the exam. What's the use? What's the point? Right, so here we go. That's done. That's done. You all got it down? Onliners, we okay? 8,53. Fantastic. Right. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Timeline questions are grade 11. Timeline questions are grade 11. Watch here. I'm going to show you another one here. Number two. Now let's go into, uh, let's take out a loan. Come on. Let's take out a loan and let's take out a loan for 500,000 rand. We're going to take out the loan. The interest is calculated at 8,2% per annum compounded monthly. And the loan is over, let's say, 10 years. Right. Calculate your monthly installment. Calculate your monthly repayment. Now, this is the easy one. After this, we're moving. We're going to use the same example and we're going to do the balance outstanding on a the loan. Then we're going to do the trade-in. So it's a loan. So it's PV. PV equals X into 1 minus 1 plus I to the minus N all over I. So 500,000 is equal to X is your monthly repayment. 1 minus 1 plus your interest, 0, 0.082. Please convert this to a decimal. Over 12 to the power minus 12 times 10 years. All over I, 0, 0.082 over 12. Please convert this to a decimal. Now we're solving for X. One shot, watch here. Where do we start on our calculator? Start from the denominator, multiply it by what's outside, press equals on your calculator, and then divide it by everything else. And that will isolate X. That will make X the subject of the formula. So let's go to our calculators. Fraction 0, 0.082 over 12, multiplied by 500,000, divide that by open brackets, 1 minus open, 1 plus fraction, 0, 0.082 over 12, close brackets to the power, minus 120, close brackets. Boom. 6,119 rand 35 cents per month. That means if you pay 6,119 rand per month, you'll be able to repay this loan for 10 years. How much will, how much interest was charged? So you then, if they ask you how much interest was charged over the 10 years. So obviously we're going to take this amount, we're going to multiply it by 12, we're going to multiply it by 10. Multiply it by 12 months, multiply it by 10 years. That gives you 734,321.85 cents. And then you're going to minus your initial amount of 500,000. That's the loan you took out. So the balance of it will be your interest. 234,321 rand interest you paid on a 500,000 rand loan over a period of 10 years. Why? Because the 6,119 includes interest. Agreed? And what happens in your ninth year when you can't pay they confiscate it. The sheriff comes, he attaches it. You lose all your money and they auction it and they make double the amount that they made. So be very careful when you're taking out a loan. 
And if you are Muslim, you know, interest is haram. Don't even touch it. Don't even go near it. Lasseri, you scored 93 for maths and it's all thanks to Okaf. Alhamdulillah, mashallah. This year you're going to get 98 or 100. Lasseri, we're waiting for you. You can get the grand cash prize as well as the product prize at the end of the year. Remember, there are prizes, guys, for top results, top achievers. Right. Now let's do the same example. So how much are we paying monthly? 6,119 uh, rand 35 cents is what we are paying per month. So now you got a better job or you got a bonus and you decided to pay up seven years of your 10-year loan. Right. So now we're doing balance outstanding. You pay seven years of your 10-year loan. Calculate the balance outstanding, the balance outstanding for the remaining period. Now it's balance outstanding guys, watch here. This is what we do. PV equals X into 1 minus 1 plus I to the minus N all over I. PV is our balance outstanding. PV is equal to X we found 6119,35. 1 minus 1 plus, what was my interest? 0, 0,082 over 12 to the power minus. I'm leaving it open. I'll tell you why. Right. How do I get this year on the top? How do I get my N year? You take your full term minus your paid up term to get your N. So your full term is 10 years times 12 compounded monthly. Minus your paid up term is 7 times 12. So you can do it all in one. You don't need to do it in two separate ones. Here's a little hack. It's a little hack. It's a trick. You can do it all in one calculation and get the full marks. Your memos won't do it this way. They'll do it in two separate components as two big subs. But it's only worth four marks. So you might as well get your four marks like this. So 120 minus 7 times 12 is 84. 120 minus 84 gives me minus 36. Because you've got 36 payments outstanding, including your compoundings. Three years, which is 12, and compounded monthly. So three times 12. Three years, compounded monthly. Three times 12 is 36. Makes sense? Obviously. Now work it out. 6119,35 into 1 minus open brackets, 1 plus fraction. 0, 0,082 over 12, close brackets to the power minus 36, close brackets equals, divide that by fraction 0, 0,082 over 12, boom. You still owe them 194,705 rand, 72 cents outstanding. Finish. And that's your balance outstanding. So we did depreciation, we did alone we did balance outstanding am i right we're now going to do the trading the trading of machinery where you buy it and you need to trade it in in five years time then we're going to do immediate payment deferred payment final payment one 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 example of each and finance is finished we then crack paper two onlineers how are we doing guys how are we doing? Too much interest, where to? You're right. Okay, so here goes. There was your hack. Guys, again, I'm saying I cannot keep on repeating. Look, it's a big, I've got to finish the whole year's work in one day. So I cannot move at a snail's pace. So if you feel that you've missed a concept or whatever, 
Go back to the Okaf website tonight or tomorrow and to YouTube. Okaf on YouTube. You'll check this program. Watch it over and over and over again. All right. Let's now go into trade in. So we're now on to the third concept, which is the trade in. Right. So you buy equipment. You buy equipment for 800,000 rand. It needs to be traded in after five years. Depreciation is on the reducing balance method at 15% per annum. And it needs to be replaced with new equipment. So new equipment will increase by inflation at 9% per annum. A sinking fund is set up that earns 8,5% per annum compounded monthly. Calculate your monthly repayment into the fund. Question like this, 10 marks. So in your answer, why 10 marks? Because it's broken up into four parts. Now, you know the memos, they make me laugh. The stuff that's supposed to be done in one step, they break it up into multiple parts. The, 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 the questions that's supposed to be broken up into multiple parts, they do it in one step. So guys, don't look at the memo for this type of calculation. You just follow what I'm showing you now. I'm going to break it up for you. Otherwise, it's going to get too complex for you. Yes, Kayla, we will be doing probability. We'll do probability right at the end. Compound interest minus future value. I'm not understanding that question, but anyway. Right, let's go. Right, we're trading it in. So what the first thing we need to do is we need to calculate the book value. Or the scrap value of the old equipment. So now we're going to go A equal B into 1 minus I to the power N because it's on the reducing balance. Please read it. Read the question. If they say straight line method, you've got to use 1 minus I times N. If they say reducing, 1 minus I to the power N. So now we take our 800,000 Rand into 1 minus. So here, Mr. Catherine, Faisal. You see, all your equipment that you have here, in five years' time, if you want to say all your equipment here is worth 800,000. And in five years' time, if you want to replace it with new equipment. So here we go. So let's see how much you're going to have to open up a fund for and how much you need to spend. Right? You're watching. Good. Right. So we got eight. We're going to first find out what's the book value of your current equipment that you have here. Right? We're assuming that your current equipment is worth 800,000 or a million rand. Right? So one minus. Your depreciation, you're depreciating it at 15% per annum, 0 0.15 to the power five years because you're going to replace it in five years' time, right? So let's see. 800,000. So now that means your equipment after five years, sorry to tell you this and burst your bubble, Mr. Catherine, your equipment, your scrap value of your equipment now is only worth 354,000. Right. You can say goodbye to your equipment. 354,964. 0.25. But it's not depreciation is not always a bad thing because within within the next two years it means it's worth zero. That means everything is paid up and it's an asset to you. At the moment it's depreciating, it's gonna depreciate to zero. Not that it's depreciating in quality, but it's depreciating in value. 
Correct. We on we on the same page, guys. I'm using Mr. Kathri, our IT guy, to explain to him this concept. I think it will relate directly to him. Right now, obviously, you're going to replace all this because in five years' time, you want to replace it with new equipment, right? So obviously, we need to find out what's the new value of your equipment. So the new value of your equipment will be with inflation. So let's do inflation. A equal P into one plus I to the power N. So now we're going to take eight hundred thousand into 1 plus your inflation rate of the country at the moment is about 9%, so 0 0.09 to the power of 5. And let's see what new equipment will cost you in nine years, in five years' time. 800,000 into 1 plus 0 0.09. Hey, let me go back. 1 plus 0 0.09 to the power of 5. Your new equipment will cost you 1.2 million. 1,230,893 rand 16 cents. So the same equipment that you had, or better equipment in the same range that you bought five years ago, will now no longer cost you 800,000, will cost you 1.2. But you're trading in all of this. So say the new guy who you're going to buy it from says, give me all your old equipment. So obviously now you're not going to pay 1.2 million. So now the value of the fund that you need to set up at the bank to save for your new equipment, you have to take this amount and you've got to subtract what you traded in. Yes or no? Because you're giving it to them. They're taking it as a... So now we take we take 1 million. We take 1, 2, 3, 0, 8, 9, 3, comma, 1, 6. And we subtract your old equipment because you're giving it back to them. Make sense, Mr. Catherine? Yes. Minus 3, 5, 4, 9, 6, 4, comma, 2, 5. And that means you need a fund set up in the bank for 875,930. You either need this cash or you need to set up a savings in the bank, comma, 91. Okay, so now, yeah. Ah, lovely. Check out Mr. Kethry. I think you should write the metric paper because that's what the question says. Calculate the monthly into the fund. So now we need, so either now you're going to save cash or you rather take advantage of the investment uh, percentage that, say, Al Baraka is going to give you. We're going to go the halal way. We're not going to go to the bank. So say, say Al Baraka gives you 8.5 percent per annum. Right now, calculate your monthly repayment into that fund. Obviously, if you didn't take the, the return on the investment, you would have had to put in a bigger amount every month. Right, so let's now do it. So here we go, guys. Step number one, we calculate the book value. Step number two, the new, va the new value of the equipment. Step number three, the value of the fund. So that's the value of the fund. Because remember, that plus that must give you that. Okay, quiet. Now... It's 8,5. Al Baraka is giving you 8,5, or any other Islamic bank is giving you 8,5% on your investment, not interest, but profit. Right. That's the difference between interest. Right. Here goes. So now we now need to calculate. So now it's a future value. It's a future value investment. It's an annuity, Mr. Kathri. You're now opening up an investment. So you call your broker. You tell your broker, I need an investment. So what he does, this is your last step, guys. Future value is equal to X into 1 plus 1 plus I. 1 plus I to the power N minus 1 all over I. So Mr. Catherine, you need 875,934 and 91 cents. X being your monthly repayment into 1 plus, it's earning 8,5, 0, 0,085 compounded monthly to the power 12 times 5 years minus 1. We're just substituting into our formula over 0, 0,085 over 12. Here we go, Mr. Kathry. You're now going to find out how much you have to pay per month. That means, you know, what would be the smart thing to, for you to do, Mr. Kathry? is don't think that your equipment is going to last you forever, which you know it's not. So what I, I, what I would suggest, Mr. Kathry, you start doing now, is you start, you open up a fund, and you start putting that money for five years, 
And in five years' time, you've got a lump sum and you can decide on whatever equipment you'd like to buy to upgrade your equipment. So let's go. So we're going to go 0 0.085 over 12 multiplied by 875. So we're going to take that. We're going to multiply it by that. 875.934,91 equals. And we're going to divide it by this entire bracket. Open bracket, 1 plus fraction. 0, 0.085 over 12, close bracket to the power. 12 times 5 is 60 payments. You've got 60 payments to make. Minus 1, close brackets equals, boom. Yeah, it's a bit heavy, but yeah, 11,766 rand, 60 cents per month. Or you can rob a bank. Or you can tata my chance, what everybody does. They, this is now called smart or what? Wise men, this is the wise choice to make. Right? But you know what? Just round it up. You don't even need to go 11. Just take 10K every month, put it away and say, right, in five years' time, in five years' time, I'll have enough for to replace with brand new equipment. Amen. 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 Right. So here we go. Here we go. Here we go. That was the trade-in we used, Mr. Catherine. Yes, monthly installment, see your seal 11,766,61. Well done. Well done. Well done. Now, Paco, calculate how many years it will take the value of a truck to decrease to 50%. Obviously, we did 25% in the first one. Paco, 50% in your formula, you'll say 0 0.5p. 50%, 50 over 100. 0, 0.5 P equals P into 1 minus 0, 0.15 to the power N. And you would do the same thing, Paco. Edison, I'm talking to Paco Edison, who put in, who sent us that comment. Okay. That's the question. Thank you. Calculate how many years. All right. Anyway, there we go. That was the trade-in. Now we're going to do immediate payment. Right. Mr. Catherine, sorry. you in the hot seat here. We're going to use you. Right. So, Mr. Catherine. Mr. Catherine. Let's use Mr. Catherine here. Mr. Catherine. He decides he wants to uh, buy a new house. His wife is putting a lot of pressure on him. She says she doesn't want to live where she's living. She wants to move to Morningside. <laughs> Right. So Mr. Kentry wants to buy a new house, right? Buys a new house, but he takes out a loan. He buys a new house. Mr. Kentry, what's the price of a house today? A decent house, 2 million. 2.5? 2.5. 2 All right, let's go for 2.5 million. Mr. Kentry, you tell me how long, over how many years would you like to pay your house? Ah, he wants to pay it over 20 years. Right. They're going to tell you at, say, 8% per annum compounded monthly interest. 8% per annum compounded monthly. Right. Now, Mr. Kentry decides, listen, he wants to be the smart guy. So he wants, to, the minute his money comes in today, he wants to put in his first repayment today. So his first payment, guys, watch here. You see, Mr. Cassidy is a smart guy. His first payment is paid immediately. So this is called the immediate payment, the day he receives the loan. Calculate his new reduced monthly repayment. Calculate the new monthly repayment. Okay, so Mr. Cassidy, you took out a loan. So here goes. Now, Mr. Kathy's loan is no longer 2.5 million. So now we're going to say PV minus X. Why? Because it's his loan amount minus what he's paying immediately is equal to X into 1 minus 1 plus I to the minus N all over I. The new loan amount is not P, it's not 2.5 million because he's paying his first repayment today. Right? 
So 2.5 million, Mr. Kathri came into your account, but you decided you're going to now take your first month's repayment and not pay at the end of the month, you're paying it today. So your new loan amount is not 2.5, it's 2.5 less whatever you paid in. Common sense, right? So that's the X amount, we don't know. So use this formula, guys, for immediate payment. For immediate payment, use this formula. Now watch what happens. Put your pens down. The minus X will come on this side. So PV equals x into 1 minus 1 plus i to the minus n all over i plus x the minus x from that side now we only want one x so watch what what we're going to do pv is equal to we're going to take out x as our highest common factor and now we're going to put 1 minus 1 plus i to the power minus n all over i plus x divided by x is 1. Yes or no? Right. Now, let's substitute. PD is 2,5 million. So here we go. 2.5 million, 2,500,000, million Mr. Kathri, is equal to x into 1 minus 1 plus your interest was how many? What percent? 8 percent. 0, 0,08 over 12 to the power minus 12 times 20 years over i 0, 0,08 over 12 plus 1. Now to get x, we divide, divide. So what is x equal to? So let's go to our calculator. Fraction, 2,500,000. Here we go. This is the moment of truth, Mr. Catherine. This is what's going to cost you every month. 2,500,000 over open bracket fraction one minus open brackets one plus fraction 0, 0,08 over 12 close brackets to the power minus 12 times 20 that's minus 240 payments over and this is exactly how they calculate it at the banks 0, 0,08 over 12 go to the side plus one your financial institutions will do the same thing, equal, and this is quite right. On a 2.5 million rand house, on a 2.5 million rand house at 8% per annum compounded monthly over a period of 20 years, and you made your first payment immediately, it's 20,737 rand 54 cents per month. Hey, I'm... <laughs> 20 grand per month. And this is because, and this is still when you paid early. On 2.5 million, you would pay now under South African condition about 25,000 per month. You take 10% of it, and that would be your, on a million rand, you'd pay 10,000. Yeah, but now why did it come down to 20,000? Because you made that first payment immediately. It's, of course, 5,000 rand per month it saved you, times 12 is 60,000, times 20 years, 1.8 million rand it saved you. Just by you paying your first payment immediately. Pleasure. But now Mr. Kendry decides he wants to pay late. He said, I stuffed this. The wife wanted an M4 BMW, so he went to buy an M4 BMW for the wife. <laughs> he went to buy Mr. Kathy, so now he decides he wants to pay late. Let's see how he gets whacked, how they punish him now. Now, now the Maja starts from the bank side. This was Maja from your side. Onlineers, I hope you're following the story. I hope you're following the story. This one, yeah? No, but now let me see how, uh, let me see if I can get to my jambo. Oh, okay. And then we go back here. I'm just learning. Okay. Why can't you see the answer? Guys, is everything okay? Can you guys hear me and see me clearly there? Can you guys hear and see me clearly?
Rai, please do freelance. Mr. Prata, can you hear me? G, everything all good you. on that side? It's all good, yeah. Alhamdulillah. Guys, if you guys on your side, wherever you are wherever you are tuning in from all across the country, if you cannot see clearly, just check your internet connection. The weaker the connection, the blurrier it will be. So there we go. We're moving, we're boosting on full signal from our side and Cape Town's also boosting on full signal. Right, here goes. So now we're going to do a deferred payment. We're now going to pay late. Right, so let's clear the frame. Let, all right. So Mr. Kathry, uh, he buys his house for 2.5 million rand. Right, and he decides he's going to pay, uh, he's going to take it for, let's say he's going to repay it for 10 years at 8.2% per annum compounded quarterly. Compounded quarterly. He makes his first payment, he makes the first payment. Nine months after taking out the loan. No, no, Mr. Kendri is a very sharp guy because in nine months' time, his wife is expecting a, a, a new uh, a, a, a newcomer into the family. So, Mr. Kendri decides, what the hell? I'm not paying anything. I'll pay in nine months after the baby comes. <laughs> right. Calculate his new quarterly repayment. Calculate the new quarterly repayment now mr kathry what the banks did you took out a loan for a shorter period of time and you're now not paying monthly you're paying every quarter you're paying every three months so basically guys let's look at the timeline here here's mr kathry now t0 here's mr kathry right now watch here So now we know, quiet, he's only paying it in nine months' time. So in T9, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine months. The first three months is his first quarter. The second three months is his second quarter. The last three months is the last quarter. Shh. Quiet. Right. He was supposed, this is where you took out the loan, Mr. Catherine. You were supposed to make a payment here, you didn't. So you're going to get punished here. You were supposed to make a payment there. The banks expected you to make it there, so you're going to get punished there. And you decided to make a punishment there, uh, to, to, to pay there, so you're not getting punished there. So guys, for how many periods is he getting punished for? For how many quarters? For two quarters. You are getting punished with interest right so now we need to calculate number one the new loan amount his loan amount is not two two point five million it's a equal p into one plus i to the power two so two comma five million two million five hundred thousand into one plus zero comma zero eight two over four quarterly to the power two, two quarters punished. So that means your loan amount is not two point two and a half million. It's two and a half million plus your punishment, right? Because now you're getting whacked because you were naughty. You paid late to the power two. So now your loan amount is 2,603,550 rand, 625. That's your new loan amount. Now we need to calculate what's your new quarterly repayment. Right. Quiet. Let's calculate on the new quarterly repayment. So now his new quarterly repayment is a PV because he took out a loan. So PV equals X into 1 minus 1 plus I to the minus N all over I. So this is equal to X. Right, now we want PV. We, we're solving for X, guys. 
So now we're going to put in for PV. We're going to put in is 2,600,2603,500. Oh my word, I don't have space. Let me do this. Let me try and zoom out. Give me a second. Let me try and zoom out one. Uh, let me move this up. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I hope you guys can see there. I know it's a bit small. So now we're going to go the 2603550,625 is equal to X into 1 minus 1 plus his interest rate 0, 0.082 over 4. Am I right? To the power minus. I'm leaving that out because we need to calculate that over 0, 0.082 over 4. To calculate N, it was how many years? 10 years compounded quarterly. So he had to make 10 years compounded quarterly. He needed to make 40 payments. But he skipped two, he skipped two payments. So it's to the power minus 38. 40 minus 2. 40 minus 2 is 38. So now he's got to make, he's got to pay a higher amount in a shorter period of time. So now X is equal to, let's work this out. 0, 0,082 over 4 multiplied by 260. 3260350,625 divided by open brackets 1 minus open brackets 1 plus fraction 0, 0.082 over 4 close brackets to the power minus 38 close brackets equals yo Mr. Ketri every quarter you know what you got to pay 99,297 rand and 1 cent Per quarter. Yeah, it will work out to about 33,000 rand per month because you paid late. It would have been 25,000 normal. It would have been 20,000 if you paid early. <laughs> but because you paid late, you now charge, you hit with the interest, you have to pay 33,000 per month, which is 99,000 over three months per quarter. Of course, you're going to get the interest charge in between. You get punished by taking their offer. So there we go, guys. Let me just see if I can go here. Let's zoom in and let's pick that up. There we go. There we go. Take this one down. We're now going to do the last one. The last one in finance, which is called the final payment. So now Mr. Catherine, he's now become a big motor. He's become a big boy. So after five years now, he's got this massive company. So he wants to buy now a Mercedes Vito to transport all his equipment. Mota, he wants to drive around in Mercedes now. <laughs> I mean. Right. So let's work out. Follow the story, guys. Follow the story. These are all different scenarios. Correct, Bashir Mukhtar, 99,297. On the point, on point, guys. On point. Skiyama, why do we compound for two? Because it's for two payment periods. You are being punished for two payment periods. That's why it's to the power 2. That is why it's to the power 2. Although it's compounded quarterly, but it's two payment periods. I hope that answers your question. Skiyama. Guys, I hope you're enjoying this. I hope you're getting ready. I hope this is boosting your confidence. These are templates. You go home and you learn. Yo, five past ten already. Don't worry. Don't worry. All right, let's go. I'm clearing the frame. Like I said, guys, those of you who have just joined us, you can uh, 
watch this live show again it's being going to be put up it's recorded this live recording is recorded and it will be put up onto youtube and onto the okaf um, sa handle on youtube and on their website okay here goes so mr kathri you decide now you want the mercedes vito what do you think how much is it 1.3 million 1.5 million right so mr kathri wants a mercedes veto van and his veto is 1.5 million ah he wants the executive right but now your finance house only gives you six years to pay it off they give you six years to pay it off at let's say 8.1 percent per annum Mr. Kathri decides to pay 30,000 rand per month. So now Mr. Kathri pays 30,000 rand per month because his business is doing good. So he decides he wants to pay 30,000 per month. Now, Mr. Kathri, how long will it take you to... Uh, okay, in fact, not six years. Let's just put it here. 1.5 million, 8,1% per annum right at 30000 rand per month question number 1 how many payments will mr kathri need to make how many payments of 30000 i'm going to put 30k 30000 will mr kathri make and that's 5 marks and the next question, calculate the final payment required to amortize the loan. Calculate the final payment required to pay up the loan. And that's for another five marks, so 10 marks here. So Mr. Kendry, you decide, because your business is doing so well, you decide, okay, I'm going to pay 30k a month. No matter what amount the bank gives me, I will pay 30k a month. Now, how many payments will you need to make? And then there'll be a little last amount in the last month. We need to calculate what that value is to pay up the loan. Let's work it out. So the first thing we're going to do, the answer to question number one. Here's your answers. Answer to question number one. We're now going to go, because it's a loan, PV equals X into 1 minus 1 plus I to the minus N all over I. So PV is 1,500,000. X is 30,000 into 1 minus 1 plus interest is 0, 0,081. Right? Uh, over and let's say it was compounded monthly, right? You took out the loan and it was compounded monthly to to the power n to the power minus n to the power minus n because that's what we need to find all over i 0, 0.081 over 12. Right. So now we need to multiply this by that and then divide it by thirty thousand. So we're going to take 0, 0.081 divided by 12, multiplied by 1,500,000. Let's go. 0, 0.081 over 12, multiplied by 1,500,123. And now we divide that by 30,000. We get 27 over 80. So that multiplied by that divided by that gives me 27 over 80 the plus one from here will come on the other side as minus one is equal to minus into now i'm going to add that on my calculator one plus fraction 0, 0.081 over 12 gives me 4027 over 4000 4027 over 4000 to the power minus n again i'm going to move over to the side 27 over 80 
minus 1 equals minus 53 over 80. I'm going to do it here on the side, guys, because I don't have space. So that is going to give me minus 53 over 80. Minus 53 over 80 is equal to, please make sure you know how to, that gives me minus into 4027 over 4000 to the power minus n. Negative and negative will cancel out. So I'm moving up here, minus n log. 4027 over 4000 is equal to log um, 53 over 80 minus n will equal to log 53 over 80 divided by log 4027 over 4000 minus n will equal to let's do it on a calculator log fraction 53 over 80 close brackets divided by log fraction 4027 over 4000 close brackets equals minus 61,2 minus 61,2 so negative and negative will cancel so how many payments of 30,000 he'll make 61 payments therefore 61 payments of 30k and then you got a decimal and then one payment less and one payment less than 30,000. So you'll make 62 payments in total. Mr. Gadri, you will make 62 payments of 30K. It will just work out to about five years, isn't it? So it's about right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, Mr. Kathy, now remember, you cannot get a negative answer. If you get a negative in your final answer, it means that that payment will, that, that loan will never be repaid. That loan will never be repaid if you get a negative answer. So, if they ask you, will, will this loan ever be repaid? You must say yes, because I get a positive answer. Because if Mr. Kendry takes out a 1.5 million rand loan and decides to pay 5 rand every month to the bank, will that loan ever be repaid? Never. Only 5 bucks you're paying every You'll pay for eternity. That thing goes on to infinity. You'll never repay that loan. Not in a million lifetimes. Right. Calculate the final payment required to pay up the loan. Now we want to calculate what's that last amount less than 30,000. Right, watch. So I'm erasing this, guys. We want the final payment. We want the final payment to pay up his loan. Now you break it up into parts. Let me show you. This is the last part and then we're going to wrap up finance. This is the last part. And then we're going to wrap up finance. Don't worry. I know there's many people that are asking us online. Can you do this question? Can you do that question? It's all form part of these templates. But however, don't panic. I told you the two PDFs that I'm going to send you. That's going to be uploaded onto OCAF's website is going to contain everything. You can just download it and print it. Nice to work with a hard copy. Right. Here goes. Guys, remember we got limited time, so I'd love to do everything. Right, let's go. So we're answering question number two. So the first thing we need to do is we need to calculate the bank's amount. You see, Mr. Kathry, 1.5 million, uh, million was the loan you took out. It didn't include the interest. So now the bank's amount is straight. A equal P into 1 plus I to the power N. So the bank's amount is 1,500,000. And you can do this in the exam. Write the bank's amount. And write this in pencil. And erase this at the end. I'm just giving you a technique of answering this. 
Write this in pencil. Bank's amount. So 1 plus 0, 0,081 over 12. To the power, how many payments did you did you make, Mr. Kathry? 61, am I right? So let's see. 1 million 500,000 into 1 plus fraction 0, 0,081 over 12. Close brackets to the power 61 full payments. So, Mr. Kethry, after your five years or after your 60 payments, you would have paid the bank 2,261,000. One million five hundred. Sorry, I, I. It's one million five hundred one two three into one plus fraction zero comma zero eight one over twelve. Close brackets to the power sixty one. Yes, two two six one zero oh, five five comma three five. So that means you paid them seven hundred and sixty one thousand rent interest. Right. That's bank. That's what they are requesting from you but you've been paying 30,000 rand a month so you it's like a future value because it's like a savings but it was earning interest so now fv let's calculate mr kathry is paying in so now you calculate your amount your amount that you've been paying in is 30,000 into one plus fraction 0, 0,081 over 12 to the power 61 minus 1 all over Shh, guys so let's see how much mr kathry has paid in so 30000 into open open 1 plus fraction 0, 0,081 over 12 to the power 61 minus 1 close brackets equals divide that by your fraction 0, 0,081 over 12 Mr. Kathry, you've been paying in 2,254,978 rand 82 cents. Now, obviously, there's a difference. There's a difference between the bank, what the bank wants, and what you paid in. So let's calculate what that difference is, and that would be your final payment required. But let's not forget, they must add one more month's interest to you. That last payment must still accrue one month's interest. The bank's not going to ignore that interest. No, they'll take it, of course. So now let's do the last part, the final payment. So that was part one, part two. You break it up like this in the exam. Don't do it. Your memos will all show you this in one calculation. You don't want to do it. You want to break it up. So let's go. Final payment. Let's now work out what your final payment is. We're now going to take this 2261055,35. And we're going to subtract 2254978,82. And let's see what that's going to give us. 2261055,35 minus 2254978,82. And that's going to give us 6,076 rand 53 cents. Now let's add one more month's interest. So A equal P into 1 plus I to the power 1. So now we're going to take 6,076 rand 53 cents. 1 plus I 0, 0,081 over 12 to the power 1. And that will give you your last payment required. Here's your final answer coming up. Your last payment required to amortize the loan. So you'll make 61 full payments of 30,000. And then your last payment would be multiplied by 1 plus fraction 0, 0,081 over 12. Close brackets equals 6117. You'll make one last payment of 6117,54. Final payment. And there we go. Your, law, your, 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 your veto is paid up. Can you see how all this makes sense? And there we go, guys. Here we go. That's your final payment. 
you subtract the two and then you add one more month's interest. Do it separately. Bank's amount, your amount. Subtract the two, add one more month. So we did depreciation, we did the loan, we did balance outstanding on a loan, we did the trade-in, we did immediate payment, we did deferred payment, we did final payment. And there we go, boys and girls. It's now 20 past 10. It's now 20 past 10. I don't want to start a new topic now. So guys, onlineers, Tahia and everybody else. Uh, Tuesday and Thursday, live on DSTV at 9 p.m. 9 p.m. channel 347. Let me just put it up there for you guys. Let me just put it up. If you guys want to watch us live on TV, uh, you want me to go through the prelim finance, it will also be done on TV. So DSTV channel 347, Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. That's our live, but we're on every night. I'm on every night from 9 to 10, but Tuesdays and Thursdays is live. Monday night I'm on, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, every single night. But Tuesdays and Thursdays is the live. And it's Hilal TV. You can also go to hilal.tv. If you don't have DSTV, hilal.tv website. And you can live stream it. And the next day, if you miss the live, the next day, on Wednesday, Tuesday nights will be put up on YouTube. So you can go to YouTube, hilal.tv. The day after, if you miss the show on YouTube, you can just go on to Hilal TV. And you'll see the night before show. So next week, Tuesday, this coming Tuesday and Thursday, we live on TV. Guys, you can talk to us. There's even a WhatsApp number. Send out your questions. We'll try and crack, crack your questions live on national TV and give you a shout out as well. Okay, so now look what we've done. We've now completed finance. So that means we've completed 90% of paper one. We only got probability to do, which I'll leave for last. We're going to go for break. We're going to come back. We're going to crack paper two. So already 90% we have back. We already got our distinction for paper one. Do you guys feel it coming? I feel it coming. <laughs> anyway, let's go. Leave that out. All right, we're going to go. We're going to go for break now, guys. I think we'll resume at 11 o'clock. Come, go and have a lack of breakfast. It was an intensive session this morning. Onlineers, hope you guys are loving the show. Jazakallah Tahia and everybody else. Muscle Bay in the house. There's waters as well there in the back. Go and grab yourself a water that has been generously sponsored. Jazakallah so much. We resume at 11 o'clock. Alhamdulillah. Thank you, Tahir. Thank you for our team there in Western Cape. You eat now. <laughs> yes, Hilal is on every day, 9 o'clock, 9 p.m., 9 to 10 p.m. every night. Monday through to Friday, right through until your exam. Your live stream, hilal.tv. Your live stream, Music Fusion, hilal.tv. Okay, salamu alaikum. Enjoy your lunch. Enjoy your tea break, your comfort break, and I'll see you back at 11 o'clock when we crack math paper two.
Good morning everyone, my name is Rorisa Makaila and I am the winner of the 2022 OCAP SA Online Metric Math Workshop Competition. <laughs> yeah, that's quite a mouthful, but we'll get into that later. I just wanted to make this short video to encourage and congratulate the metric class of 2023 for making it this far. You have been in the schooling system for 12 years now and it all comes down to this. Um, we are at the end of the year, which means that finals are starting soon and the time between now and finals is very crucial in that you have to work hard and make sure that you are comfortable with what you've been doing this whole year and that you're confident walking into that examination room. And I can say confidently that um, by attending these workshops, you are bring yourself one step closer to reaching your dreams because they will do wonders to your marks. Only if you actively participate and ask questions. So please just make sure that you use them wisely because they can really help a great deal in your marks. And having great marks in metric comes with a lot of great rewards. And speaking of rewards, OCAF SA is hosting a competition for um, the participants of these workshops. Um, so you will have to send your final results and your June metric results to them next day in January. But like, you don't have to worry about that right now. Just be mindful of the fact that there is a competition that will be hosted by OCAF SA. Um, if you registered for these workshops, you will be sent an email um, after the final results are re re released. But just make sure that you enter the workshop when, when that happens. And finally, I just want to say good luck. Just um, grind. This is the final push. You're almost there. And I believe in you. You will make it. So there we go. That was Rory Sang. Um, the winner for the OCAF ESA Mathematics Workshop for Grade 12 Learners. He walked away with some hard cash. Um, he, he took the first position in our maths competition. We host this maths competition every year. Uh, so it's a cash prizes that's available for, um, for first, second, third, as well as most improved. So Tayo is going to be sharing some more information about this exciting competition. I really wish I was one of the participants of this competition. Yeah. All right, thank you so much for that, Hassine. Um, As you mentioned, that cash prizes are available for first, second, third, as well as most improved. And now the big question, how to enter? So this competition is open to all our learners who have attended the OCAF South Africa Math Workshop. That's all of you guys. Um, you will receive an email when the competition opens. Remember that this email will come from the official OCAF email address, so beware of scams and phishing and all sorts of other things. Um, what to do? You're going to have to upload your June exam as well as your final exam result to the online registration form. We will provide the link for you in the email. Um, as I said, you will be communicated to via email and we will also host our official OCAF online program to announce the winners. I think that sounds extremely exciting. I can't wait. And um, this competition will open once your results are released, which would be sometime early January, I believe. And um, yeah, the competition will take place during January of 2014. I wish you all the best. Good luck. Yeah, so some of this hard cash will help you uh, to buy a laptop um, to assist you for your preparation if you are studying at a tertiary institution. So look, and it's some serious cash. I don't want to share too much information in terms of the amounts, um, but the Kaiwa Institute has also matched OCAF in our prize money, ran for ran. So I'm very really excited about that. Tayyar, do you want to share some information of these QR codes that's popping up on the screen? Let's this one is that. the workshop page about the videos. Let me share some information. See them on the screen. Is it up on the screen? I don't see it. Yes, it is. Maybe we can just share right. some information for the parents and learners out there. 
All right, so um, the QR code, there is it, I see it. Um, this QR code, if you scan it at the moment, it directs you to a link to donate to Okaf SA, which enables us to continue um, assisting with these workshops and to continue providing these workshops to the learners. As you know that none of you have paid for any of this. It's free of charge to you. However, on our side, there are a bit of costs incurred. And by donating to this, you enable us to continue these workshops. Um, I think we're concluding in Durban and we move to Cape Town in a few weeks' time. So, yes. Yes, so there we go. So this is the grade 12 uh, uh, workshop. On the 28th, we will be hosting a workshop for grade 10. So it will, we will be going to South Peninsula High School in Cape Town. And uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, yeah, we need to set the record straight with Mr. Kota. He thinks that you are having cooks and coffee with us here in Cape Town. But a matter of fact that you're actually in Johannesburg. I mean, so freezing people... cold. <laughs> yes. Okay. Shame, man. My condolences. Hope the weather improves. So, yes, Stay is coming uh, to you live via the OCAF studios in Johannesburg. And I'm coming to you live from the OCAF SA um, studios here in Cape Town. So, tell me, Taya, how was the first bit of the workshop? Um, I believe the energy was quite uh, on a high. What was your it's experience like? I think it's been very fun. The learners have tons of questions and they seem to be following along quite well. Um, I hope Mr. Kathy gets his new house as well. That was very interesting and exciting. Yeah, I think um, they've got they've got this. I'm very excited to see our learners. I expect great results. Yeah, no, fantastic. But anyway, myself and Tia will see you more importantly. Tia will be our host for the rest of the day. I'll be doing lots of the technical duties. And we'll see you on the other end at about uh, 11 o'clock when we do commence. So we'll chat to you later on. Great. See you all soon.
All right, welcome back, students. I hope you had a lovely break. Mr. Gota, can you hear me? Do we have Mr. Gota there? Uh, Hassanan, can you hear me? Yes, indeed, loud and clear. I think Mr. Kota is just digesting his lunch. Let's, uh, or his break time snack. Mr. Kota in the house, can we hear you? We can't hear you. I think the tea break is not good. We can't hear you. Yes. So let's see, you know, that, that uh, gremlins normally crop in the... Get into Always. the system, you know, during the tea break, you know, perhaps maybe we should uh, go all the way, fueled by Red Bull, you know, to get through <laughs> the sessions, but uh, no fear, we've been having a fun full uh, uh, morning session, it started at about 9 o'clock, uh, here at the Alphala College in KwaZulu-Natal, we've got a code of about 500 learners, and Tahir has been the host, uh, I've been behind the scenes for most of the morning but the year is going to be taking you through the program tell me a little bit more about the energy of the participants lots of the questions uh feedback and then some of the positive uh vibes that they've been sharing with us tell us what i think like. the learners have, have have been having a blast they're quite keen they're so ex excited we've been getting some very interesting questions from them as well so i think it's going great it looks like a fun fold event over there at Alphala in Durban as well. Looking at the camera, the learners are very interested. Um, online as well, I think they're having quite a blast. Our numbers have been going up. I think at one stage we even had almost 300 students wow. on our YouTube page. And if you're tuning in, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let us get those subscribers going. Our goal is 10,000. I wonder if we can get into that by the time you write your metric finals. Please, so, please. Remember to subscribe, like the video, like the live, and share it with your friends. No, 100%. We need a little bit more love there. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, this will greatly assist us. We do have lots of these educational programs, uh, educated training workshops, as well as mathematics workshops for grade 10, 11, and 12. Uh, so please assist us by um, subscribing and, and liking uh, this video. Uh, we will also be sharing some information in terms of that PDF study. Once we get of that, course. we'll load it onto the website um, so learners can um, access um, uh, all of this information that's going to assist them for the maths um, preparation. So, Certainly. yes, so we can remind our learners during the course of the program that that's, um, that is the website link that the PDFs will be loaded. And today we'll load the video of Maths Paper 2 on there to, um, to make it easy for our learners to prepare for the, uh, for the paper. Of course, uh -huh. and you can find Maths Paper 1 on the OCAF YouTube page already. So, there you go. We've got you covered, got you all sorted out. Yes, and any of the learners, we do find that some learners have poor internet connectivity. And during the live, sometimes the screens are a little bit blurry. You can go onto this website link after the workshop and access these videos. As a post-event viewing, you might have a little bit more um luck in terms of accessing that unit let's see what mr kota is on about let's see if we can bring him on mr kota can you hear us we need to get you on the session uh, we need to listen to your beautiful voice and your energetic discourse around maths workshop yes mr kota is quite busy he eats sleeps and drinks mathematics nothing else he did mention that he will be on TV, he's regularly on TV and on radio. And what he's talking about here? I can't hear anything on his side. Oh, <laughs> we okay. stuck. 
Yeah, so look, um, Mr. Kota normally has radio programs talking about mathematics, and he's got a program on TV talking oh. about mathematics. There we go. Hello. There we go. Okay, so yeah, back. it's over to you. Take the show away. All right, welcome back, everyone. Welcome back, Mr. Kota. I, had, I hope you had a lovely tea break. Always good, always good, always refreshing, and we came in with a renewed energy. Brand new That's energy, all see. fired lovely, up for lovely. session number two. Lovely. Take it away. I mean, I mean, I mean. As I keep it like this. Is that better? Okay, here we go. Okay, guys, we are back in session. We are back in session. Bismillah, let's go. We are clearing the frame. Okay, guys, we're starting with analytics and circle analytics. I'm going to be doing the component from the Gauteng Prelim paper, right? Got it? Better? Right, let's go, let's go, let's go. We are back in session. Welcome, everybody. I hope you guys had a lack of break. And we are starting with, as they say, in the diagram, we're starting off with analytics. Thank you, grade 12s. Hope you guys, seems like your tummies are all nice and full. Don't make it too full. So they give you a diagram that looks like that, like this, and like that. Take this down. Take this diagram down. That point is P12 and 5. This is point T, A and B. And they tell us that that is angle theta. That is point S, and that is O. Oh, oh no, That's a, this is the twigs component, man. What am I talking about? What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? Sorry, that was the twigs component. Let's go again. Sorry about that. Right, let's draw. This was the analytics. Let's go through the. We're going to do analytics and circle analytics first. There we go. B, P, and negative 2. This is the point C. That's the point F, 0, and negative 4. Quiet. That's angle alpha. This is 135 degrees. And that's 0. A, negative 1, and 4. And yeah, that's point E. Let's see what the story tells us. Now, guys, obviously your data handling, and that was very easy, and I've picked up that everybody scored fantastic marks in paper two. So what's your paper two strategy? Data handling, you're going to get full marks for that. Analytics, you're going to get two questions worth 20 marks each. So get full marks there. Circle analytics, you're going to get full marks there. 20, 40, 60. Right. Triggs. Let's work out our strategy for triggs. Let's see how many marks was triggs. We had 26 and 14. That's 40 marks, 50 marks, guys. And that is excluding Euclidean. Here goes. 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, you already got 110 out of 150 from the Euclidean. Make this, take this down. You got your grade 11 Euclidean, you get full marks there. You're going to have proof of theorems, you're going to get full marks there. You're going to have your easy similarity and proportionality, you get full marks there. And then you're going to have your difficult or your challenging and that is only worth about 10 marks to 15 marks. So basically, we are, we are aiming for a minimum of 135 out of 150. Thank you, grade 12. We are aiming. This is our aim. Full marks, full marks, full marks, full marks, full marks, full marks, full marks. And here, if you're good enough, you'll get your total. If not, even if you left that out, you would still get a 135 out of 150, which is good enough. 
which is fantastic. Right, girls. Thank you there. I need silence. So this is our strategy. Learners across SA, this is our strategy on how we're going to conquer 135 out of 150. Let's start with the analytics. We start with the analytics and we're going to see how we get full marks here. Analytics and circle analytics, we're going to get full marks. We're going to total it. Let's see. What does the question tell us? In the diagram, A, negative 1 and 4, B, P, and negative 2, and C are vertices of triangle A, B, C. They also tell us that that is equal to that. E is the y-intercept. F is the midpoint. F is the midpoint. Thank you. The angle of inclination, 135 and alpha, respectively. Right. Question number one. Let's score full marks. Our first 21 marks. And this was scary when marking papers because I still found learners did not get full marks for analytics and circle analytics. They didn't get the 21 and the 20. They didn't get the 41 marks. Why? That was already 41 is almost a third of your paper. It means you would have already passed. Your pass mark is 30%. How can you fail? How can you fail when you only got 31 and 30, uh, 21 and 20, 30% 30 of your paper? So let's go. The gradient of AB, let's do it. The gradient of AB. Now it's worth two marks. Now come on, let's all do it together. AB's gradient. Okay. Now, obviously, you would normally use y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. But obviously, you can't because you got p. You got an unknown. So which other way can we use, can we find the gradient? The angle of inclination, yes or no? So I am going to go tan 135. Tan 135 is equal to the m of ab. So the M of AB is equal to, let's go to our calculators, and this will give us our gradient directly, tan 135. So let's go, tan 135, and I got minus 1. I get minus 1. Tan 135, so the M of this line is equal to minus 1. That's it. That's your first two marks. I can't understand how anybody could have not got this right in the exam. Okay, question number two. Show that the value of P is 5. Show that P is equal to 5. So where is P? There's P. So again, we're going to use the gradient formula because we got the gradient. So the M of AB is equal to Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So we got, we found the gradient of AB, which was negative 1. Y2 minus Y1. So 4 minus minus 2 is 4 plus 2 over X2 minus X1 minus P. Now, this is a simple equation where we just need to solve for P. This is a simple equation where we just need to solve for P. I'm going to move up to the top because I don't have space. So let's do it together, guys. Minus 1 is equal to 4 plus 2 is 6 over, and that's over 1, is equal to minus 1 minus P. And there we go. I'm going to put a tick. You all understand that. Onliners, you guys are following us. Onliners, are you guys following us? Yes, we're going to go to tricks. We're going to be cracking tricks. I'm only doing one component on analytics. I'm only doing one component on analytics and we're going to get into trigonometry. So onliners, I hope you guys are following and I hope you guys are working with us. Let's go. Right. Let's solve this one. Come on. Show that P is equal to 5. Let's do it. Right. Let's cross multiply. 
Let's cross multiply or we can flip this side and flip that side. It's up to you. So minus 1 into minus 1 minus P is equal to 6 times 1 is 6. Negative times negative is a positive. So you left with 1. Negative times negative is a positive. 1 times P is P is equal to 6. P is equal to 6 minus 1. P is equal to 5. And there we go. P is equal to 5. We now got P is equal to 5. The coordinates of B, the coordinates of B is 5 and negative 2. So there we go. Full marks. Calculate the coordinates. Question number 3. They want the coordinates of C. So while everybody else is taking this one down, you start. Find the coordinates of C. Find the coordinates of C. So let's go. Question number three. This is actually, it was 3.3 .3 in your exam, but our question number three, they want the coordinates of C. Yes. Yes, please. That will be grand. The coordinates of C. Right. What formulas do we have in our toolbox? We got gradient formula, we got distance formula, we got midpoint formula. Hey, look here. We got that piece is equal to that piece. So what am I going to use? Which formula am I going to use? Midpoint formula, obviously. Right. So to get the coordinates of C, this is what you write. You write X midpoint is equal to X1 plus X2 over 2. And you write y midpoint is equal to y1 plus y2 over 2. So this is x midpoint. That is y midpoint. C's coordinates, you can call this one, if you want to, you can call this one x1. You can call that one y1. So we are using the midpoint formula, but we've adjusted it. We've adjusted it to make it an equation because we are, we've got, we are given the midpoints. So X midpoint is zero. There, F, we're using F. There we go. Is equal to X1, which is X, plus X2, which we found was five over two. Y midpoint, Y midpoint minus four is equal to y1, which is y, plus y2, which is minus 2. We don't change the sign because it's positive, over 2. So c is coordinates, multiply by 0 times 2 is 0, equals x plus 5. So x is equal to negative 5. So c's x value is minus 5. This here will give me negative 8 if I cross multiply is equal to y minus 2. So y is equal to minus 8 plus 2 minus 6. And you got negative 6. So c is coordinates. We have just found out now that c is coordinates. We are convinced that we are right. We don't think we're right. We know we're right. Minus 5 minus 6. There we go. You got your first 6 marks out of 21. You got your first six marks out of 21. Now they want the equation of line AC for four marks. The equation of line AC. Come on, work that one out on your own. The equation of line AC. The equation of AC and still people got this wrong. Why? The equation of AC. This was question number four. The equation of AC. Come on, guys. Work this one out. What do we need for an equation? The gradient and one point. We, can, we got two points. Well, the, our problem is solved already. Find me the gradient. Find me the gradient. And find the equation. Now, I'm going to show you something nice now. Watch here. 
Watch here. Watch this. I'm not going to work it out separately. Are you working it out separately? You first finding the gradient, then you're going to go y is equal to mx plus c. Don't do it. Watch here. Watch here. y minus y1 is equal to m. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 into x minus x1. There's one formula. You know y minus y1 equals m into x minus x1. Yes or no? So all I did is I took that m and I put it there. So we use one formula that saves you time. Oh, <laughs> let's call this x1, y1. Let's call that x2, y2. Right, let's do it together. y minus y1 is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 minus minus 1 plus 1 into x minus x1. There we go. <laughs> bada bing, bada boom. Our problem is now going to be solved. Minus 10 over minus 4 into x plus 1. y minus 4 is equal to 5 over 2. Am I right? 2 goes into there 5 times. 5 goes into there 2 times into x plus 1. Now I multiply that out. y minus 4 is equal to 5 over 2x plus 5 over 2. And here is your final answer. AC y equals 5 over 2x plus 5 over 2 plus 4 plus 13 over 2 yes yes mr k <laughs> game over and we used one formula Have you guys never used this formula before in school? Well, now you know. Some people in the exam will work hard and some will work smart. You choose. You want to be a hard worker or a smart worker? Take it down, take it down, take it down. Guys, I hope you're enjoying it. Let's see some of our comments coming from our live onlineers. Would have to practice. It's so easy. D uh, David, David, catch him. Just take out M and put Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. No practice, Baba. No practice. Easy peasy. Learn it once and apply it in your exam. Lovely. Lovely. Yeah, you've been doing it a long way, Jesse. All right, watch. Okay, we're done here, guys. We're done here. The size of CAB. Ah, nice. CAB. Ah, they want that angle there. They want angle CAB. Now, that is going to be quite easy. Those of you who have, done, who, are taken, who have taken this one down, I know some of you are faster than others. Find me CAB. So watch here, you do agree with me that that is a triangle. You do agree with me that that is a triangle. We got the exterior angle here. So all we're going to do, exterior angle is going to equal to the sum of the interior opposite. We need to find angle alpha. Once I get alpha, I can get to angle C, A, B. Oh, now you see it. So many of you left this one out in your exam. And it's marks for Mahala. 
It is marked for Mahala. So we're now going to find Alpha. So we're going to say 10 Alpha. 10 Alpha is equal to the M of line AC. So 10 Alpha, we worked it out in our previous one, was what? 5 over 2, am I right? So Alpha is equal to shift 10. Shift 10, 5 over 2. 68,19, 68,2. So this angle here is 68,2. So therefore, angle CAB, that's what they want. Therefore, angle CAB is equal to 135, which is our exterior angle, minus 68,2. And you must put the reason exterior angle of triangle is equal to the sum of the interior opposite angles and guys i haven't worked out this paper before i'm working this paper out with you as if we are all writing it together i'm only working through the question paper i haven't gone through this but it only makes logical sense so 135 minus 68,2, 66,8 degrees. So that angle there is 66,8 degrees. There we go. We don't think we're right. We know we're right. I'm not even going to check the memo to check if we are right. The area of triangle BEF. B, ah, that's interesting. Triangle B, E, F. B, E, there's E. B, E, F. Come, work it out. The area of triangle B, E, F, and it's a non 90 degree triangle. There are many ways to do it. You know what they say, there's many ways to kill a cat. They want, what, 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 what question is this? Question number six, am I right? The area of triangle BEF, the area of triangle. Yay, that's about the ugliest. What's going on there? Area of triangle B, E, F. Obviously, they're going to test you on area. You know they're going to test you on area. So let's see. Hmm. Many ways of doing it. We got this one's coordinates. We got that one's coordinates. E. Now, I don't know why they, they gave you so little marks, only three, because I'm only seeing one way of doing this, and it looks a bit rough, the way I'm seeing it. Maybe you guys got a better way of doing it. But from what I'm seeing, BEF. We know that E is X value. We know the gradient of this line here is 1. We know that E is X value is 0. We don't know its Y value. E is X value is 0. We don't know its Y value. But we got the gradient of this so I can find the Y. If I find the Y, what I possibly can do, I know that 90, I can get that angle there. Whoa, okay. The way I'm seeing it, I don't know whether it's according to the memo. I'm going to first find out what is E's Y value. Then I'm going to say half of that side times that side times sine of the included angle. You know the area rule for non-90 degree triangle in 
trigonometry. Area of a non 90 degree triangle is half of a side times another side times sine of the included angle. Yes or no? So let's find E's coordinates. We know that the gradient here is 1. So we know that the M of AB is equal to, was it 1 or minus 1? Minus 1. Right. So M of AB was minus 1. So Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1 was equal to minus 1. Right. I now, I don't know that one. I want to find that Y value. So Y2, Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1 is equal to minus 1. So Y plus 2 over minus 5 is equal to minus 1. Y plus 2 is equal to minus 1 times minus 5 is 5. Y is equal to 5 minus 2 is 3. So that means my Y value here is 3. Right. So my Y value there is 3. Like I'm telling you, I haven't worked out this paper before. I'm working this paper out with you. We all doing it as if we are writing the prelim or the final exams together. Now, obviously, I know I'm right. Why? Because 3 is above 0. It's positive. So I know I'm right. So I know that EF, watch here. I know that EF's length, 3 and 4 is 7. I need EB's length. Right, wait. Before I get that. We know this is 90. 135, we know this is 45. Sum of angles of a triangle, so we know that this angle is also, so OE, they don't tell us what this point is, X, is also 45. Right? So wait, I'm now going to say EXO, Angle E X axis O is equal to 45 adjacent supplementary sum of angles of a triangle. Therefore, O E X O E X is also equal to 45 sum of angles of a triangle. Sum of angles of a triangle. Right. Now I'm going to find the area. But first, I need the length of this line. I need EB because I got EF. Look here. That's angle. That's E. That's F. I got that as 7. This is B. 5 and minus 2. E, I got 0 and 3. I got this angle as 45. I need this side. So now I'm going to find out what is EB. Now I'm going to find out what is EB. Let's all go and do EB together. I don't know why they gave you three marks only for this. This one should be a five to seven mark question. But in any case, they gave us three marks. We take what they give. Maybe there might be another way to do it. I'm just telling you that's the way. Like I said, I opened this paper up for the first time now. So that's what came to me. There might be other ways. So don't fight with me. Don't crucify me. So EB, the distance EB is equal to the square root. This is what I would have done in the exam just to make sure that, because I know I'm right with this. So maybe if I had time at the end of the paper, I'd come back and look for a shortcut. For now, I'm not going to look for the shortcut. I'm just going for exactly what I see. So X2 minus X1 all squared plus Y2 minus Y1 all squared. Now, guys, it was, this entire component was 21 marks. 21 divided by 2 is 10.5. You only got 10 minutes in your exam. You only got 10 minutes. That's why you got to fly through this. Others, you're not going to have enough time. So, EB is equal to the square root of X2 minus x1 all squared plus y2 minus y1 all squared eb is equal to the square root of minus 5 squared is 25 
plus 5 squared is 25. EB is equal to the square root of 50, which is what? 2 times 25. 5 root 2. 5 root 2. So that means EB is 5 root 2. Therefore, your area is equal to a half of 7. A half of 7 times 5 root 2 times sine of 45. And let's do it. 7 times 5 root 2 equals. Divide that by 2 equals. Multiply that by sine 45. 17,5 unit squared. Please put in unit squared for area. They will minus a mark if you don't put square. Right. Total marks out of 17, we've already scored 16. 16 out of 21. We already scored 76% for this question. Onlineers, are you with me? Are we working together? Yes, Kayla, 17.5, 17.5, well done. Match destroyers. Poo, 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 Mr. K, it's nice to be <laughs> Welcome, Anele. Welcome, Anele. There we go, there we go. Well, well done, guys, well done, well done. I smell that distinction coming up. I smell that distinction coming up. We already got 76, right? Now your one higher order question to wrap this question up. Your one higher order question to wrap this question up. Your one higher order question to wrap this question up. Here goes. Another point, this is question number seven. Another point, take this down. Another point. K, T, and T, where T is less than zero, is plotted such that AK equals five root five units. Calculate the coordinates of K. For five marks. <clears throat> let's see. Let's put in, let's put on our armor. Let's load our weapons. Time to reload, Baba. Time to reload. Time to reload. So another point K, T, and T, where T is less than zero. That means this is negative and that is negative. So negative on the X, negative on the Y, such that AK is 5 root 5. AK. There's A. And maybe this could be point T. This could be, what do you think? You think uh, K can be here? Uh, negative and negative. So T and T. Calculate the coordinates of K. Let's see what can be done here. Another point K, T, and T, which is plotted such that A, K is 5. Oh, and they tell us that A, K is 5 root 5. They tell us that A, K is 5 root 5. So what I'm going to do, guys, I'm just going to quiet. I'm just going to put K a little bit there. So that is K, T, and T. Basically, solve for T. 
solve for t so they telling me that ak ak is 5 root 5 okay so i think i'm just going to use the distance formula ak is equal to so i know ak squared is equal to x2 minus x1 all squared plus y2 minus y1 all squared i'm using the distance formula so 5 root 5 squared is equal to x2 minus x1 all squared plus y2 minus y1 squared so 5 squared is 25 times root 5 squared is 5 is equal to t squared plus 2t plus 1 plus t squared minus 8t plus 16. 25 times 5 is 125, isn't it? 125 is equal to 2t squared plus 2t minus 8t is minus 60. Uh, 1 plus 16 is 17. So 2t squared minus 60 plus 17 minus 125 is equal to 0. So 2t squared minus 60, 17 minus 125 is minus 108. So t squared minus 3t minus 54. Ha! Works, it works out like a boss. T and T. Uh, factors 9N. No, ni ni 9N. No. 9 times 6 is 54, isn't it? 9 and 6. Minus, minus. So T, T is equal to 9 or T is... No, no, no. Minus plus, sorry. Minus 9t plus is minus 3. So t is equal to 9 or t is equal to minus 6. But they told us that t is less than 0. So what's your answer? Negative 6. And there we go. We got full marks. Total marks complete. Kaufela. Shayata full 21 marks. Twenty-one marks in the bag. Twenty-one marks. Onlineers, did you all get negative six? Yay, Kayla. <laughs> Amin. I promise I'm going to be the top learner this year. That's the spirit. That's the spirit. Well done, well done, well done. Uyanda, well done. So that's it for this question. We're now going to do circle. I'm going to do the component from the Gauteng prelim paper. I'm going to do the entire circle analytics. If there's anything more that I need to teach you about a topic, I'll talk to you while we're doing it. How are we doing, guys? Still thumbs up. Why? Okay. Now for the next 20 marks. This was 21. Our next 20 marks, we are now doing circle analytics. So put the heading there, circle analytics. Put the heading circle analytics. And there's a higher, there's a lack of higher order question also coming out in circle analytics. Okay, so let's go. Let's draw our circle. Draw your circle. Quiet. Draw your circle. Here goes. So you got a line uh, coming down there. You've got a line coming down here. Got 
Got a line going up there. You got a point here. Uh, let's see where is our x axis. Our x axis is somewhere, it's below there where it meets. There's your x axis. So that's your x axis. That's your y axis. That's zero. That's the point A, one and negative one. That's the point B. They tell us that this line is parallel to that line. They tell us that point where it meets is point C. They give us a point here, M. They give us the point M and they tell us M is minus two and three. Okay, that's all that they give us. Now, this component was out of 20 marks, guys. So 20 and 21 would have given you 41 out of 150. Which was 27% of your... So between 27 and 30% of your paper is only analytics. You still got data handling, you still got tricks, you still got Euclidean to get your distinction. I mean, they made it so easy for you to pass. How can you fail? Right, first question. They want question number one. They want the equation of the circle. Right. So now we know we got a point on the circumference. Quiet. And we know we need to find the radius there. That's R. Some of you in your exam, yes. Yeah, so it's x minus x1 squared plus y minus y1 squared is equal to r squared. Some of you just went and you put x plus 2, the center of the circle, plus y minus 3 squared is equal to r squared. Can that be right? No. How can it be? Because you didn't find your radius. So r squared is equal to x2, the distance formula, So R squared is equal to X2 minus X1 all squared plus Y2 minus Y1 all squared. R squared is equal to minus 3 squared is 9 plus uh, 4 squared is 16. R squared is equal to 25. Yes or no? R squared is equal to 25. So therefore, they want the equation X plus 2 all squared plus y minus 3 all squared is equal to 25. Some of you went to and put 5 squared. You can't. Don't go and put 5 squared. R squared is 25. Don't go and write 5 squared. Wrong. Don't go and write 5. Yes, we know R is 5. We know R is 5. But you write your completed answer here. 25. R squared is 25. Write the next one. They want the coordinates of C. So when you're done with this, I know many of you are working at super high speed right now. Get me the coordinates of C. Get me the coordinates of C. Now remember BC is a tangent, guys. BC is a tangent. So question number two, they want the coordinates of C. Now we know that the radius is 90 degrees to a tangent. So that line will be parallel to that line. I'm just working, I'm, I'm looking at different ways. So we know that the Y value here will be three. It will be the same Y value here. So C's Y value is three. 
because it's in the same line as that. So we need C's X value. Right, so let's go here. I'm going to erase here. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Now remember, guys, that C also lies on the circle. So I'm answering question number two. So we know C, we don't have its X, we know its Y value is 3. We also know the equation of the circle X plus 2 all squared plus Y minus 3 all squared is equal to 25. I got the Y value. So X squared plus 4X plus 4 plus 3 minus 3 is 0 squared is 0 is equal to 25. Because if I put in 3 here, 3 minus 3 is 0. So x squared plus 4x, 4 minus 25 is minus 21 is equal to 0. Let's break that, let's factorize that. We're going to get x, x, 7 and 3 plus minus. x is equal to minus 7 or x is equal to 3. Obviously, this is the negative value, so C's coordinates is minus 7 and 3. There we go. Are we all on the same page? I can't hear you. Right, so we got C's coordinates minus 7 and 3. Right. The next question for five marks. They want the equation of tangent AB. They want the equation of this line. Come on, work it out. Let's see how good are you. They want the equation of the tangent AB. The equation of line AB. Onliners, did you get C? Negative seven and three. Yes. Collins, Lavron, can I say minus? No, what is that? Since radius is five, can I say? No, Lavron, I know what you're doing there, bro. Okay. Yeah, okay, if you wanted to. Yes, you could have. Because this was a straight line, guys, and the radius was five. You could have also said that this one's coordinates is minus 2, minus 5 to give you minus 7. You could have done it that way as well. No problem, Lavron. Full marks for you, brah. Full marks for you. Well done, Lavron. Right, let's go, let's go, let's go. I want the equation of the tangent AB. You know you need to learn these concepts, the equation of a tangent. Right, let's do it. What question is this? What number is this? Question number three. The equation of tangent AB. Right. So I'm going to find first, how do we find the equation of the tangent? We know that's 90 degrees. I've got a point, I need the gradient. I can find the gradient of MA. So MMA is equal to Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, which is for, this is the, of the radius, the M of your radius. And you can write it like this, exactly the way I'm writing it here, you can write it in your exam. This is how I would have answered it in the exam if I was writing your paper. 
That's 4 over minus 3. Therefore, the m of your tangent is equal to 3 over 4. You change the sign and flip the fraction. Why? Because your radius is 90 degrees to your tangent. Now, boys and girls, all the ways that I'm showing you now is exactly the way I got 100% in matric. From failing in grade 11, from failing my June exam in grade 12, to getting 100% at the end of the year. That's why I chose this as my field. Exactly how I learned it, exactly the way I processed it. Within a period of two months, just in my June holidays, I mastered math. I said, enough. Enough of failing from below 20% to 100% total marks. <laughs> you think I'm lying. Therefore, and I've been doing it ever since. Right. Therefore, the equation is going to be y minus y1 equals m into x minus x1. So y plus 1, I'm using that coordinate now. y plus 1 is equal to m, the new m that we found, 3 over 4 into x minus 1. y plus 1 equals 3 over 4 x minus 3 over 4. Your final answer, y equals 3 over 4 x minus 3 over 4 minus 1 minus 7 over 4. There we go, full marks. The next question, the length of BC. The length of BC. Those of you who are done with this, do the next one. Question number four. The length of BC. Come on, this was so easy, guys. Shocking to see that many of you just blanked out or left, this, left it and couldn't score the marks here, guys. Shocking, absolutely shocking. Right. So we want the length of BC. We know B's X coordinate is the same here. So it's minus 7. And we don't have its Y value. But we just found the equation of this line here. Y equals 3 over 4 X minus 7 over 4. So Y equals 3 over 4. X is minus 7. Minus 7 over 4 y equals minus 21 over 4 minus 7 over 4 which is equal to minus 28 over 4 which is equal to minus 7. yes or no am i right just double checking 28 over 4 minus 7 correct so that means b's y value is also minus 7. Now they want the length of BC. So obviously from, from, from your x-axis to C is, what's it, 3, ne? And from year to year is 7. So therefore, BC is equal to 3 units from C plus 7 units that we just found now. 3 plus 7 is 10 units. Onlineers, are you enjoying the session, guys? Are you winning with us? 10 units, Lavron, like a boss. Lavron, I'm waiting for you, bruh. I'm waiting for your final marks. <laughs> we don't think you like. We know you like. I swear I'm not like. I didn't like. From failing in June to total at the end of the year, Baba. Why do you think I'm doing this for the rest of my life? 
I promised myself that time when I got total marks for maths. I said, yo, if I could do it, I'm sure the whole country, everybody will, will need it for the rest of my life. If I can just spend my whole life showing people how easy maths is. This is pie. This is easy. It's a walk in the park. I don't know how you find maths difficult. I, I can't for the life of me. It's formula application. <laughs> That's it. There's nothing. There's no rocket science. We are not doing a chemical uh, reaction and sending a rocket to space. It's done for you. Determine the equation of a circle centered at A. Where's A? Where was A? Oh, yeah, that's A. Det right. Okay, so we got this, we got that, we got that. Let's do question number five. Come, we got two questions to do. Then we're going to start cracking trigonometry. Question number five. Find the equation of the circle wired centered at A, centered at A, that has both the x and y axis as tangents. That has the x and y axis as tangents. Right, let's go. It's all about how you process the English. You can't speak English? Oh, oh, eh, eh, you have a problem. Oh, oh, you are going to fail. Centered at A, centered at A, that has the X and Y axis as tangents. Centered at A. So if it's centered at A, that's a tangent, that's a tangent, and A is minus 1. In. Right, that means, listen, that means from there to there is one unit. And from there to there is also one unit. So I got the radius. Ah, uh, come on, they're playing with us here. X minus X, 1 squared plus Y minus Y, 1 squared is equal to r squared so x minus 1 all squared plus y minus minus 1 plus 1 all squared is equal to 1 squared which is 1 finish done not rocket science Ha, now comes your higher order question, the last question for five marks before we start cracking trigonometry. Right. The fun is about to start. We're going to finish this one out. It's now 12 o'clock or 12 or 2. We're going to push for another 30 minutes. So we're going to finish this last question. We're going to start with tricks. We're going to go for lunch. We're going to come back. We're going to continue with tricks. And then we're going to end up with Euclidean. And inshallah, we should have enough time for probability. Right. Shh. Quiet, 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 quiet. Okay. The last question here. The higher order question for this. Onlineers, are you ready for the next one, guys? Here goes. Question number six. Another circle with center. Take this down. Another circle with center. N, P, and three. And radius four. Intersects the circle. Centered at M.
at two distinct points. Find the possible value or values of P. Find all possible values of P. Find the possible value or values of P. Worth five marks. Right, let's see. Now, I love this question because those of you who have been at my workshops the entire year, every workshop we did this question. That is why when I looked at this question paper that uh, how they, it's as if they took whatever I did in the workshop and they made a paper out of it. And I can't understand those who have attended my workshops and didn't get 100% for this paper. How? Because everything that I did in the workshop was in the paper. Now, for, to answer a question like this, don't go and draw another circle. Some of you went to go and try to draw another circle, right? Listen. Here's the rules. Listen. Here are the rules for this game. This is a new game. You must be able to read this question whenever they tell you. Now watch here. Here are the rules of this game. If your distance between your centers, listen, if your distance between your centers is greater than the sum of your radii, they will have no points of intersection. If your distance between your centers is less than the sum of your radii. They will have two distinct points. So all you have to do is apply this rule. And if your distance between your centers is equal to the sum of your radii, the two graphs will just touch, or another word for just touch is tangential. So they tell you another circle with n, p, and 3 and radius 4 intersects at two distinct points. Come on, let's do it together. Watch how easy it is. Can, could you have got anything less than 100% for this? No. Still find it difficult to understand how South Africa is battling with men. Why? It's a walk in the park, man. Right, so there's two distinct points. So here we go. Distance between centers must be less than the sum of my radii. So what's your distance between the center? Center at M. So distance between the center. So you got one circle here. You got another circle. I'm just saying you got two circles. This is M minus 2 and 3. This is point N, P and 3. This one's got a radius of 4. This one's got a radius of 5. So let's do it together. All you have to do now is solve for P in an inequality. So something tells me this is going to be quadratic. I don't know. But my gut is telling me. So what is the distance between the centers? Okay, the sum of your radii is 5 plus 4. The distance between your centers, the distance between your centers is going to be the square root of x2 minus x1 all squared plus y2 minus y1 all squared. 
That's your distance between your centers. That's your sum of your radii because they have two distinct points. It's less than. So the square root of, in fact, no, 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 let's not do that. Let's say P plus 2 squared plus 3 minus 3, 0 squared. Ah, beautiful. Didn't I tell you what I'm predicting? I'm predicting a quadratic less than. Now we square this side, we square that side. 5 plus 4 is 9. 9 squared is 81. So P squared plus 4P plus 4 minus 81 less than 0. P squared plus 4P minus 77. 11 and six. Whoa, this thing works out perfectly. Beautiful. So here goes, here goes, here goes. This is, here we go. What we did yesterday. P plus 11. 11 sevens are 77. Minus 7. Less than 0. So my two critics, so 11p minus 7p is 4p minus 77. My two critical values, minus 11 and 7, that's my CVs. And what did we do yesterday? We did pos or neg bet. All we did, because it's an inequality, we do that. Minus 11, 7, less than 0 is negative. Where is this negative? There, so p lies between... Here's your final answer. P7 minus 11. We use the same sign. Bada bing, bada boom. Game over. Game over. There's our next 20 marks. Onliners, are you checking? Are you checking how far it's done? Collins, well done. See, can't decide on a name. <laughs> you just realize the only reason you failed the paper because you told yourself it's hard. I realized it wasn't. No, it's not. It's a walk in the park. You just have to know your rules and apply your rules. That's all that maths is. Maths is beautiful. One plus one is two. You can never forget it. So if I teach you the distance formula, you can never forget it. You apply. You apply. I hope you guys are enjoying it. Gish or Pipi Tele, you still with me? Peace. Lots of love from Kway and from KZN. Easy peasy, Jesse. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Nothing hard. Nothing hard. Right. Quiet. We got 15 minutes left. Let's start with drinks. I'm going to start with your compound and double angles first. Shh. Quiet. Right. Quiet. Listen. Those of you who attended the last workshop before, you know I taught you how to remember the sine compound angle and the cos compound angle. Okay, here goes. See what's happening here. Something's happening. Come on. We're still there. Cape Town, how are we doing there? Studio, how are we doing? We all good there, Taya? All good, good. Are you guys all okay over there? Lovely, 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 lovely. Right, let's go. Okay, we're starting with rigs. Now listen to me. Your compound angle, you have to know, and you need to know your double angle. Hey, you guys messed us up in the exam also. Sign A plus B. 
sine of a compound angle is sine cos cos sine a b a b and for sine the sign stays the same s for sign s for stay the same so sign a minus b would be sign cos cos sign and the sign stays the same are you all with me so sign of a compound angle say it with me sign of a compound angle say it loud sign cos cos sign the sign stays the same Say it with sign of a compound angle. Do it again. Sign of a compound angle. One more time. Sign of a compound angle. Good. But what if we had cause of a compound angle? Cause of a compound angle. What here? Here it becomes cos, cos, sign, sign, and C for cos, C for change. So cos of a compound angle, say it would be cos, cos, sign, sign, the sign changes. Cos of a compound angle? Sign of a compound angle? No man, no man, no man. Sign of a compound angle. Sign cause, cause sign, the sign stays the same. Cause of a compound angle. Cause, cause, sign, 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 change. Sign of a compound angle. Cause of a compound angle. Good. Give yourself a nice round of applause. You know it now. Right. But now, now the double angle. The double angle. Right. So that's... So guys, onlineers, I hope you're all singing with us. <laughs> I hope you are all singing the song with us. Sign of a compound angle. Sign, cause, cause, sign. The sign stays the same. Cause of a compound angle. Cause, cause, sign, 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 changes. Right. Here goes. Now your double angle. Quiet. Right, so I'm erasing the compound. That's easy. You all know it now. Right, double angle. Double means two times. So sign two times an angle. 2A. Sign 2A can only be broken up in one way. 2 sine A cos A. Yes or no? But cos 2a can be broken up in how many ways? Three ways. Cos squared a minus sine squared a or 2 cos squared a minus 1 or 1 minus 2 sine squared a. So sine 2a can only be broken up in one way, 2 sine a cos a. But cos 2a can be broken up in three ways. Cos squared a minus sine squared a, 2 cos squared a minus 1, or 1 minus 2 sine squared a. Don't forget that. I'll show you. We're going to apply this in all in the paper. We're going to get full marks for trigonometry. I'm confident about that. Slightly, we're not going to get full marks here for Baba. Destination, distinction. Right, let's do this. Again, I haven't worked through this paper. I'm dallying it with you like we're dallying it for the first time. Like you dallying it in the June prelim exams. Onlineers, how are we doing? How are we doing? How are we doing? Yo, you hear that? Let's keep... Where did you ever hear, Mr. Kathy? Learners are telling us online, let's keep lunch break. Let's move. Imagine sitting for two days and they're saying, let's keep lunch break. <laughs> let's leave the break. 
Are you seeing that, Taya? I see it. I'm so excited that everyone's enjoying it so much. Yo, they want to skip. They, I don't think they believe I'm human. They think I'm a robot. They think I'm a creation of Elon Musk. They think I'm one of those Tesla bots. Right, oh, let's go. Sign. 360 minus 2x. Take this down. Times sine negative x. All over. Sine 90 plus x. Plus 2. Cos squared. 180 plus x. Simplify without the use of a calculator for 6 marks. I'll show you. This is easy peasy. This is a peanut butter and jam sandwich. <laughs> Smarties, M and M's. Yeah, man. <laughs> We're only talking about food. Hey, I got some whispers here, bruh. Talking about food. Right. Some chocolate balls. Let's go. Ah, uh, don't be filthy, man. Don't be filthy, man. So, yeah, I can't deal with these great twelves. Their mind is in the gutters, man. I can't deal with them. Right, let's go. Sign 360, the name stays the same. Sign 2x. But 360 minus is in your fourth quadrant. Sign is negative. Times, watch. You do each part separately. We did that. Sign of a negative angle is minus sine of that angle. If it was cause of a negative angle, it would have been positive. Shh. Quiet. Over. Sine 90. 90 and 270 changes the name to cos x. 90 plus is in your second quadrant. Sine is positive there. Don't look at cos. Look at the original. Sine is positive. Plus. Two. Cos 180, the name will stay cos squared x. Now you guys ask, but isn't 180 plus in your third quadrant? Yes, it is. It cos is negative, but it's squared. Anything squared is always yeah or yes. Negative times negative is a positive. Sine 2x is sine 2a. It can only be broken up in one way. 2 sine x cos x times sine x over cos x plus 2 cos squared x. Cos x and cos x will cancel out. We left to a 2 sine times sine is sine squared x plus 2 cos squared x which is equal to 2 into, if I take out my highest common factor, sine squared x plus cos squared x, which is equal to 2 times 1, which is equal to 2. Kaboom. Bada big, bada boom. There's your first 6 max. Your first 6 max for your paper. Come on, guys. You can't afford to file. Yeah, my... Come guys, tell me, was this difficult? It was a walk in the flippant park. I wish this was your final paper. I wish this was your final paper. You all could have got a hundred percent. Hope you guys are enjoying the show. A whole weekend you have spent 10,000 learners. 10,000 learners from South Africa have spent. I feel so honored. I feel so privileged. You've decided. <laughs> Leave my chocolate balls alone. Uyana. Leave my chocolate balls alone. Right. I hope you took that down. 
Right. Let's give you an identity to prove. Prove. We're going to do more after break. Sine 5x. Cos 3x. Minus cos 5x. Sine 3x. All over tan 2x. Minus 1 equals minus 2 sine squared x. Four to five marks for that one. Let's prove this identity. Take it down. You're feeling the heat, brah. You're feeling the heat. These are your final exam time questions, guys. It's not difficult. I swear it's not hard. And I'm not just telling it to you. I'm showing it to you. Come on. Other provinces, let's see if you guys can crack this. And now there's going to be a, 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 a battle of the provinces towards the end of the year to see where our top learner last year, Al Fala, took it 100%. I think it was Aisha Effigy, if I'm not mistaken. She took it from Al Fala. There was our friend. I, uh, where was um, what are, Rory Sang from? Which uh, province? I think he was from Asanain. Where was uh, Rory from? Gauteng. Taya, do you know? Gauteng is winning. Gauteng. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. Left hand side, left hand side. Hey, we got, hey, this is the last one we're going to do before break. Now watch. Guys, pay attention. Don't go and break this up. Sine, cos, cos, sine is my sine compound angle. 5x, 5x, 3x, 3x. So it's 5x minus, because the sine stays the same, 3x all over. This is my compound angle. That is my compound over 10, 2x minus 1. This is equal to sine 2x. 5x minus 3x is 2x. 10, so it's sine 2x over 1 divided by, divided by 10, 2x is sine 2x over cos 2x minus 1. This is equal to sine 2x over 1 multiplied by cos 2x over sine 2x minus 1. Bot mess, we do our multiplication first or division. That and that will cancel out. I'm moving over here. I have cos 2x minus 1. If I From here, I move till there. I want it to be minus 2 sine squared x. So now... Cos 2x in terms of sine is 1 minus 2 sine squared x. My double angle minus 1. That is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared x minus 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. I'm left with minus 2 sine squared x. Therefore, left hand side is equal to right hand side. Enjoy your break. <laughs> I see you back in here. Enjoy lunch. Enjoy lunch. Enjoy lunch. I see you here at 1.15 p.m. We got a 45-minute lunch. There we go. I don't know how they didn't get 100% here. I can't. For the life of me, I can't understand how they didn't get 100%. It's simple. A walk in the park. <laughs> Lots of love, guys. Lots of love. Enjoy your break. Crack match, dollar match, destroy match with us. K-Way and Mathematics, we got your back. Assalamu alaikum. Enjoy your break. And with that, we come to our break. We will commence at 1.15. Thank you, Mr. Kota, for everything you, as Bashir. well.
Um, you guys, uh, make sure that you continue to like this, um, like the live stream, um, share it with your friends, and also subscribe. We will be back soon. Lots of love.
Hello there, my name is Sururi Samakaila. I am in my first year of my undergraduate studies in natural science at the University of Cape Town. And as a result of hard work, dedication, support from friends, family, and teachers, and OCAF's commitment to ensuring quality education for South Africans, I was able to obtain 100% in my metric uh, examination for mathematics in 2022. So this was a culmination of very hard work that has been put in by myself and my teachers from earlier grades, more especially grade 11. I mean, this is a crucial part of your schooling career because universities offer provisional and conditional acceptances based on grade 11 results. And it's very heartbreaking to be willing to work hard towards your dreams and metric and not having anything to show for that with your grade 11 results. So it's very crucial that you work hard. And OCAF SA has been greatly instrumental in me reaching my goals in metric. I believe that you can derive great value in attending the OCAF SA mathematics workshops. I have um, gotten a lot of help from them and I have a lot to show for it. So please just check that out and keep on working on your dreams and ensuring that you have a bright future for yourself. Lastly, I would like to thank OCAF SA for their commitment in essentially building a, bit, a better South Africa because we know that um, in future careers that will be in great demand are those that involve science and mathematics and by attending these workshops you'll be able to ensure that you participate in the future economy by working in these industries. So thank you very much to OCAF SA and good luck on your examinations. We are blazing. Welcome back, welcome back. Thank you, Tahia. Jazakallah so much. I hope everybody enjoyed their lunch and they didn't overeat. No time to sleep. That's Definitely easy. Definitely not. We are, at, we are in the final stretch and I've got some cracker questions up for you here. I've just came across some crazy three questions here and inshallah we're gonna crack it like a boss as we usually do inshallah so uh yeah all our learners i hope everybody's there i see some people saying they see the light <laughs> they see the light they're ready for flames let's show match flames uh, yeah can we get the show on the road let's go Jazakallah so much right let's go guys let's go this is where we stop before break we don't have much time right here goes I came across this one. Calculate the value of. Calculate the value of one minus four sine squared fifteen without the use of a calculator. Take this one down. It's worth five marks. Let's go now, guys. I know a question like this in the exam is going to show some of your flames. It's going to hit you guys dizzy in the exams. Let's see what are we going to do here. Right. Quiet, 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 quiet. Okay, let's go, let's go. Come settle down, settle down. I'm just thinking of one way and then I'm thinking of another way. I haven't seen a question like this before. Let's see. So if I took one minus four sine squared 
and this is going to be 15 degrees. I'm going to say 45 minus 30. Shh. Quiet. Guys, I also need to concentrate, remember? Because I'm also doing this for the first time. As you are doing it, I'm doing it with you. I'm not working through a memo here. Let's see. So like you're under pressure today, you'll be under pressure in two weeks' time. I'm, I'm under pressure today to make sure I get it right. So let's see. One minus four. I'm going to break this up into sine 45. Sine 45 minus 30 squared. I'm going to bring the square to the top. 1 minus 4. This is my sine compound angle. So I'm going to say sine cos, cos sine. 45, 30. 45, 30. And you'll notice that, if, and the sign stays the same. You'll notice that every time I do a workshop, I choose questions I've never done before, and I don't work out the memo before because I also need that little bit of a motivation. If I'm doing it every workshop, the same questions, there's no challenge for me. So let's see. So like your hearts are beating in your exam, my heart's beat. My heart beats now because I need to make sure we get it right. So let's check. This is 1 minus 4. By now, you should know sine 45 is root 2 over 2. Cos 30 sine 60 root 3 over 2. Minus cos 45 root 2 over 2. Sine 30 is a half. Squared. 1 minus 4 into root 3 times root 2 is root 6 over 4. Minus root 2 over 4. Squared. This is 1 minus 4. This would be root 6 minus root 2 all over 4 squared. Okay, so I'm not yet done. Obviously, I'm not yet done. Let's see if we can pick this a little bit up. No, we can't. No, we can't. So let's zoom in. Let's zoom in again. Okay, I'm short of space. I'm short of space. Take this one. I think I'll be right. So you carry on writing. I, I got a good hunch about this. So I know I'm right. Um, I'm going to do this, guys. 1 minus 4. I'm going to go into a new frame. I'm going to say 1. This is equal to 1 minus. Let's go back. 1 minus 4 into... 1 minus 4 into root 6 minus root 2 all over 4 squared. I just opened up a new frame. Okay, so I'll give you a chance to take this one down. Let's just see if I can continue with this and let's see where we get with this. This is equal to 1 minus 4 into root 6 squared is 6 minus 2 root 6 times 2 is 12. Plus, uh, negative squared is positive. Root 2 squared is 2 over 4 squared is 16. This is equal to 1 minus 4 goes into 4 once. 4 goes into 16 4 times. 6 plus 2 is 8 minus 2. Root 12 is root 4 times 3. Right? Over 4. Am I right? Yes, I'm right. This is equal to 1 minus 8 minus square root of 4 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4 root 3 over 4. I'm now going to take out the highest common factor inside there because I'm doing it without the use of a calculator. So I'll take out 4 as my highest common factor to cancel out with that 4. So I'm left with 2 minus root 3 all over 4. This is equal to 1 minus 4, and 4 will cancel. And I'm left with 2 minus root 3. And this is equal to 1 minus 2 plus root 3. My final answer is going to be root 3 minus 1. I don't think I'm right. I know I'm right. So just take it down. <laughs> All right. I'm doing that. Let me try and see if I can make the screen a little bit. Uh, 
Can I move it there? Here we go. Let's see if we can zoom out a little bit more. There we go. There we go. Take it down. Take it down. Take it down. I don't think I'm right. I know I'm right. There's no other way to do it. Maybe if you got a shorter way, well, good luck to you. But that's what I see. The 15 had to be broken up into, and the trick here was to bring the square to the top. Because you square the angle, you don't square the trig function. So learn this. Learn this. Guys, all these questions are going to be in the PDF that we are uploading onto OCAF's website as a resource for you. You'll see. And don't worry, you got a completed, I don't have the memo open here, but I've got another document. It's over a 200 page document with all the completed worked out solutions. So with this workshop and with that, there's absolutely no reason why you can't get your 100%. Have you all taken this one down? Can I go to the next screen? You've got it down? Onliners, can I move over to the next screen? Can I go to the next screen? Just let us know. Hit us up in the comments. Please learn and know your special angles by heart. Memorize your special angles. Like what I did now. You don't want to be sitting with a calculator. You want to be able to motor through them. Sin 60, root 3 over 2. Cos 60, half. Sin 60, half. Cos 60, uh, cos 30, root 3 over 2. Sin 45, cos 45, root 2 over 2. Tan 30, root 3 over 3. Tan 60, root 3. Know it. Know it so that you can motor through this. There's your next one. There's your next screen. Take that down. There's your memo. There's your memo. Just double check here. Root 6 there, 2 root 12, that's correct. 2, 4, that's correct, that's correct. Correct, correct, correct. Correct, 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 correct. Halas. Halas. Halas, finish. Okay, you guys got it. Let's check our, our, our comments. How's it coming in there? Moreke, thank you. <laughs> I hope you're loving it. Next one coming up, a crazy one coming up here. For six months. I don't even know which from what paper it comes. But uh, it just says paper C. But anyway, some crazy problems coming up, guys. You guys wanted a higher order, you wanted some things to give you a bit of a go. Here's some questions coming up. Okay, are you done here? Come on, hurry up. Hurry up, hurry up. We need to move. We're going to put up some amazing resources for you on the OCAP website so that you can work through it. But it's not about the question paper. It's about how you tackle it. I can give you a million questions. But if you don't know how to do it, what's the use? What's the use? All right, guys, I'm giving you, I think I need to clear the screen now. I have to clear the screen. So here comes the next one. I'm just going to go here. Let's zoom in. And let's clear the frame. Let's check this one out, guys. Simplify without the use of a calculator. Root 3, sin x. I haven't done, I haven't seen one like this before. Sin squared 72 plus sin squared 198 times root 3 cos x minus 90. Here, some nice stuff here all over. 10, 120, 10, 120, sin x. Or six marks. Simplify. Okay, onliners, you're feeling the heat. You're in the hot seat. 
Ha, let's see. I've got absolute, I, I've got a clue what I'm going to do, but I, like I said, let's, let's do it together. Right, watch. Let's do it step by step, item for item. Guys, we need to sort that. That's okay. We need to sort that. We need to sort that. That's okay. We need to sort that. We need to sort that. And that's okay. All right, let's go. Quiet. You need to pay attention. Remember mathematics, you need full concentration. Root 3. Sine x, sine x. Sine squared 72. I would convert it to sine squared 90 minus 18. Plus sine squared 180 plus 18 times root 3 times R. Ah, now watch, what do we do here? Check here, check here, check here, check here, check here. All right, that. So where is cause? Cause is in this quadrant. We go anti-clockwise 90 degrees. Now cause 90 will already change to sine x, but I need to check whether it's positive or negative. Watch here. Please pay attention. You're going to mess this up in the exam. So now we move anti-clockwise 90 degrees. Anti-clockwise. What is cause in this quadrant? Positive or negative? So you put positive. All over. Okay. You start from here. You start from cause. Cause is in your fourth quadrant. We move 90 degrees anti-clockwise. Cause is positive. And cause 90 changes to sine x. 10, 120 is 180 minus 60. Times sine x. Let's go. Don't write. I might. I don't think I'm wrong. I think I'm right, but just long. Work with me. Root 3 sine x. Sine squared 90 will change to cos squared 18. We don't need to check whether it's positive or negative because it's squared. Sine squared 180 will change to sine squared 18. I don't need to check positive or negative. That's positive. Anything squared is positive. There's the root 3. I'm putting the root 3 there. Sine x. There's the sine x. There's the sine x. Because you multiply. All over 10. 180 will remain 1060. But 180 minus is in my second quadrant. 10 is negative. Times sine x. Ha! Let's see. Do I see something happening here? Okay, let's take out the root 3 as our highest common factor. Uh -uh. Take out root 3 sine x as my highest common factor. So I'm left with cos squared 18 plus sine squared 18. All over minus 1060 is root 3 sine x. Ah. I don't think I'm right. I know I'm right. Now watch. Sine x and sine x. Root 3 and root 3. Don't forget the minus. Negative. Positive divided by negative is negative. Cos squared 18 plus sine squared 18 is 1. Your answer is minus 1. Game over. Problem solved. Take it down. Like a boss. Like a boss. Onlineers, I hope you're enjoying the level of questions we're giving you guys as well.
This is exam, final exam. Don't mess it up. Don't mess it up. Let's give you a general solution. Or let's give you another identity and let's give you one of trig substitution. Onlineers, how are we doing? Hit us up in the comments then, Jabulo, who went to Katlejo. Are you guys loving it? Thanks, Paula. The comments look good. They seem to be loving it. Alhamdulillah. Going to smash your boy. <laughs> I'm going to smash your boy. This is MMA for math. Zunisa Chauke, Bandile, surpassing it. Destination distinction. Amukoza, feeling the heat. Bruce, loving it. Tobeka Tele. Bravo, Elton. Lovely. Fire, bra. Tumelo, more stuff coming up, more stuff coming up. Stay tuned, tell your friends to join. Watch this over and over and over until you master it. We're cracking this, we're smashing it. We're gonna, ma we're gonna make math step out, brah. We're gonna make math step out. Normally, you go into the fight, you start tapping out after question two. We're going in like Mike Tyson, brah. We're going in like Tyson. All right, here goes. I'm clearing this. I'm clearing the frame. Practice on this, guys. Can I clear? All right, I'm taking out the question. Here's the next one coming up. Here's the next one coming up. Here's general solution. I haven't seen one like this, but anyway. Six sine x cos x plus three cos x minus four sine squared x minus two sine x equals zero. Seven marks. They want the general solution. Whew. Okay. Let's see. Let me double check that the question is right. 6 sine x cos x plus 3 cos x minus 4 sine squared x minus 2 sine x. Ha, let's go. Let's go. Time to fight, Baba. Time to fight. Maths is not going to smash us. Ever. I'll never take defeat by math. Maths is dead. You can't let a dead thing beat you. Question, answer. Let's go. I haven't seen one. All right. Let's see. I'm going to try something. Shh. Guys, I need silence. I need to think also. I'm going to group and I'm going to group. So I'm going to take out three cos x. And I'm going to be left with two sine x plus one minus into four sine squared x plus two sine x equals zero i i i i, I change the signs because i put brackets Shh. three cause guys i need to concentrate i need to focus two sine x plus one Minus, let's take out two sine x. Let's go. I'm going to be left with two sine x plus one equals zero. I got two terms. My highest common factor is two sine x plus one. 
I'm left with 3 cos x minus 2 sin x equal to 0. So 2 sin x plus 1 equals 0. Or 3 cos x minus 2 sin x equals 0. Uh, sin x is equal to minus 1 over 2. x is equal to shift sine minus a half minus 30 plus k times 360, where k is an element of integers. Shh, minus 2 sin x is equal to minus 3 cos x. Divide by cos, divide by cos. Divide by minus 2, divide by minus 2. So therefore, sine x over cos x is equal to minus 3 over minus 2 is 3 over 2. Sine over cos tan x is equal to 3 over 2. x is equal to shift tan 3 over 2 equals 56,3. 56,3 plus k times 180 or 180k because it's for 10. Where K is an element of integer. Game over seven marks, Baba. Seven marks. Seven marks for general solution. Seven marks. Here we had to group that. We had to group that and group. Remember, you want to get in your general solution, you want to get it's always going to be quadratic. So you want to get a quadratic and you want to get two solutions. Nice one. Nice one. They thought they can get me. I smash you. I smash you. All right. Determine that. All right. Paco. Let's do the one that Paco asked here. See, let's see if everybody can do that. 6 sine squared x plus 7 cos x minus 3. Paco sent us a question. Let's do one more general solution. 6 sine squared x. Let's see what Paco says. 6 sine squared x plus 7 cos x minus 3. Plus 7 cos x minus 3 equals 0. Come on, do it. Get me a quadratic equation here. Right, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. We're making Matt step out. Watch how we make Matt step out here, brah. Watch how we make Matt step out in the next question. You see, Matt's got a big mouth. That's all that Matt has got, a big mouth. We need to shut Matt up once and for all. Right, here goes. Shh. The only way I'm going to get a quadratic here, I'm going to say 6 sine squared x is 1 minus cos squared x plus 7 cos x minus 3 equals 0. 6 minus 6 cos squared x plus 7 cos x minus 3 equals 0. Minus 6 cos squared x plus 7 cos x. 6 minus 3 is 3 is equal to 0. Haha, ha. Matt, step out, Baba. Step out. Step out quickly before I'm going to show you flames. Let's go. Let's go. I'm going to divide by negative. So 6 cos squared x minus 7 cos x minus 3 is equal to 0. Factors of 6, factors of 3, that when cross multiply gives me minus 7. 3, 2. 1, 3, 9, 2, minus, plus, minus. Hey, 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 hey. Mathematics, you tataing a ch my chance with me, Baba. You are tataing my chance. Don't tata my chance. Don't play with me, Baba. <laughs> and now, 1 times 2 is 2. That one's positive, that one's negative. So 3 cos x plus 1 equals 0. Cos x equals minus 1 over 3. x is equal to shift cos 
minus 1 over 3, 109,47, 109,5, 109,5, plus minus. You always put plus minus, plus k times 360, where k is an element of integers. On this side, Baba. Come on, mathematics. Come on. We need to tease maths now is equal to 3 cos x is equal to 3 over 2. The maximum value of cos x is 1, so no solution. <laughs> tap out, Baba. Tap out, maths. I hope you enjoyed that one, Paco. Paco. Uyanda will never smash you. Hi, Shamin. You are asking me sign 20, sign 170, cost me 50. You. You. Okay, that will be the last one I'm going to take. That's the last question I'm going to take from them. Then I'm going to give you guys another identity. So let's simplify. Charmaine. Charmaine asked us that one. Sign 20, sign 170. Come on, let's all do it together. Sign 120. Sign 7. Those of you who took this one down, you can start with the next one. Sine 120, sine 170, minus cos 350, sine 70, minus cos 350, sine 70. Come on, let's do this. Shh. Quiet, guys. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Let's do it. Let's crack it, brah. Matt is never going to bully us again in its life. Right, this is equal to sine 120 is 180 minus 60. 180 minus 60. Sine 70, I'm going to leave sine 70. Minus cos. I want to get a 60 degrees here. 3, no. Uh, 120, I could say 90 plus 30. Are you sure this question is right? Let me just double check there. Sign 20, sign 170. Sign 20, sign 170 minus cos 350. 360. Oh, sign 170. Oh, sign 170. That's where it was. Sign 170. Ah, I knew. Okay. Just give me a second. I didn't read that carefully. Sign 170. Let me double check. Sign 120, sign 170. Sign 120. Sign 20, sign 170. You see. Sine 20, sine 170. I'm just double checking. Sine 20, sine 170. Cos 350, sine 70. That's correct. Right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's crack it. Thank you. Thank you, Winston. Thank you. Thank you. Is it right now? Guys, onlineers, I took it down right now. Let's go. Okay, let's check. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Let's go. Let's go. This is equal to. 2350, 170. Ah, nice, nice. Sign. I'm gonna leave sign 20. I'm gonna leave sign 20. Sign 170. I'm gonna say sign 180 minus 10. Minus cause 350 is 360 minus 10. Sign 70. Is sine 90 minus 20. So there's a 20, there's a 10. So I need to bring this on that side. Sine 20, sine 10, minus cos 360 minus 10 will be cos 10. Cos 360 name stays, 360 minus cos is positive times, 
sine 90 minus 20, that will become cos. Sine will change to cos 20. Now, sine, ah, cos, cos, sine, sine. So, minus cos 10, cos 20, plus sine 10, sine 20. Now, I take out the minus sine. So I got cos 10, cos 20 minus sine 10, sine 20. This is equal to minus into cos cos sine sine is my cos compound angle 10 plus because the sine changes 20. <laughs> like a boss, minus into cos 30, which is equal to minus cos 30 sine 60. Your answer is root 3 over 2. Done. Done. Are you having fun? Are you having maths fun? Right. Onliners, I hope you enjoyed that one. Black Apex, <laughs> Black Apex. We're going to do, after this, I'm going to give you one identity. Guys, your trick graphs are easy. It's your sine graph, cos graph, tan graph. How can you guys not know? And we're going to do tricks on different planes also. And we still need to do Euclidean. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Take it down, take it down. The last one here, let's give you an identity. Let's give you an identity to do. Right, prove. I never saw this one. 1 minus 10 A into cos A over cos 2 A is equal to 1 over cos 1 over cos a plus sine a okay so they only give us four marks for that Whew. okay let's see left hand side what are we going to do with left hand side I see the onliners, they are working also hard. Their brains are working, guys. Two days of maths. Non stop. Non stop. One over one minus 10a is side a over cos a. Cos a over cos 2a is cos squared a minus side squared a. Now, you know why I did this? Shh. Why did I break it up into this? Because I got that on that side. I got a cos and a side. So I, I broke this up into a cos and a side. Now, shh. cos a here. One into cos, cos, cos times one is cos a. LCD. Minus sine a into cos a over cos squared minus sine squared is the difference of two squares. Cos a minus sine a into cos a plus sine a. The guys, there's too much talking here. Now, cos a and cos a. Cos a minus sine a, cos a minus a. Ah, there's it. There's my answer. 
1 times 1 is 1 over cos A plus sine A. Therefore, left hand side is equal to right hand side. Ozaki mark. Right. Onlineers. Onlineers. I hope you guys got that one right. Killing it. Shout out to Mr. K. Hey, Anele, how's it, Anele? Right. I told you, my brain cells, thousand ran a pop. Thousand ran a pop. Right, watch here. Um, before we do 2D tricks or 3D tricks, let's give you one more. Do this one. If sign. If sign 42 equals M. Find cos 42 sine 84 sine 21 in terms of m Learn. I beg you guys, learn this one. In fact, learn everything. <laughs> and make it sign 72 also. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Mark allocation. Two marks. Three marks. Five marks, three marks, five and three, eight and three is eleven, twelve, thirteen marks. Ah, and and M and M is greater than greater than ninety but less than 360. In fact, while you guys are doing that one, take it down, start with it already. Start with it already. I want to see the 2D thing that came out in your... Prelim, how tank prelim paper. Okay, never worked on it before, but I'm sure we'll get it. I'm sure we'll get it. After this, we're doing, it's two o'clock already. We only got an hour left. We only got, we in the last stretch, guys. We are in the last stretch. Right, let's answer the first question. Now, before we do this, shh. Now, whenever you see a scenario like this where you're going to draw a triangle, you use what I call scrap. Right. S. For Sokka Toa and standard form. C for Cartesian plane. Cartesian plane. R for restriction. A is just for and and P is for Pythagoras. Right. 
standard form sine 42 equals m over 1 that's standard form it must be a fraction Sokatoa sine is opposite over hypotenuse so there we're done with s cartesian plane there we go greater than 90 greater than 90 it could be in these three but where is sine positive so there where you got a double tick is where you draw your triangle 42 degrees sine is opposite over hypotenuse m over one and we use pythagoras to find this value so this is minus the square root of 1 minus m squared. You can check it out. x squared plus m squared is equal to 1 squared. x squared is equal to 1 minus m squared. x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus m squared. It's to the left, so it has to be minus. So there we go, we use scrap. Now cos 42 is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse from Sokatoa. Adjacent over hypotenuse minus the square root of one minus m squared over one, which is equal to minus the square root of one minus m squared. There's your first answer for cos 42. Number two, sine 84. What is the relationship between 84 and the reference angle that they gave us? Good. Double angle, 2 times 42. And that is equal to 2 sine 42, cos 42, which is equal to 2. Sine 42 is M. Cos 42, we found in the last one, is minus the square root of 1 minus m squared. That's your final answer. That's it. Number 2, done. Ish, number 3. Number 3 is the problem. 3, 6, and 2 is 8. Yo, if you lost out number 3, you lost out 5 out of 8 marks. 63% of this question is question number three. 63% of this question is question number three. That means even if you got question one, two, and four right, if you got question three wrong, you would have failed the question. Come on. Come, my online friends, I'll show you. You want to see a boss move? I'll show you a boss move for question number three. Show maths. We're going to turn mathematics upside down now. Watch number three. I'm going to show you magic. Now listen to me. Watch what I do with number three. They think they're smart. Watch what I do here. Watch what I do for question number three. Quiet. Pay attention. Question number three. We, we need sign 21, right? Watch here. I'm going to start off with cause 42. Check this move out. I'm putting a star. Watch here. Don't ask me why. You'll see it now. Cos 42, we know cos 42 is minus the square root of 1 minus m squared. Yes or no? But now, cos 42 is cos 2 times 21. I'm breaking up 42 into 2 times 21 is minus the square root of 1 minus m squared. Now, cos of a double angle is 1 minus 2 sine squared. 21. Check how I got rid of the cause to bring it into sign and to bring the 21 into the problem. 
minus the square root of 1 minus m squared. Now I take the 1 on that side, minus 2 sine squared 21. There, we get into our answer. Minus square root 1 minus m squared plus 1 comes on that side as minus 1. I divide by negative. So I get 2 sine squared 21 is equal to the square root of 1 minus m squared plus 1. I divide by 2. I divide by 2. So what am I left with? Sine squared 21 is equal to the square root of 1 minus m squared plus 1 all over 2. And here's my final answer coming up for sine 21. Sine 21 is equal to the square root of the square root of 1 minus m squared plus 1 over 2. Game over, Baba. Game over. Game over. Dush, dush. <laughs> dush, dush. Pop and wave June, July, Baba. June, July. Hey, Wiseman, this is how we math. Smash your boy. Huh? Angas. <laughs> You must know, I'm doing maths till I'm sweating, Baba. I'm sweating, I'm dripping doing maths. Maths is not a physical war. It's a mental war. Sign 72, Baba. Let's check. Come, 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 my onlineers. The trick of this question was to start here. And then break it up into a double angle for cause. And then break it up into sign. Agreed. We're showing Matt's flames. Right. Let's give you another one. Yeah, there's so much I want to do. I wish we didn't have to finish at 3 o'clock. I wish we didn't have to finish at 3 o'clock. Right, let's go. I'm clearing the frame. Onliners, you want more? You want more, Baba? You want more? Yo. I privilege. You are asking for too easy stuff. Just take the minus 5 sine theta cos theta on the other side. Make it a trinomial, factorize, and get your two general solutions. Come, privilege. That question you asked me was too easy. Right, let's go. Watch here, watch here, watch here, watch here, watch here. Come on, clear frame. I'm waiting for Google to do its thing. Come on. Really, brah? Don't waste my time. Right, here goes. Take this one down.
For six marks, show that AD equals X sine alpha over sine alpha cos beta plus cos alpha sine beta cos theta. Shh. Quiet, quiet, quiet. All right, so we got two triangles. Very easy, these ones. One is a 90, one is a non-90. For 90 degree triangle, we, the only thing we can use is Sokatoa. For non-90 degree, for non-90 degree, the only thing we can use is the sine rule or the cos rule. You rename the common side first. Right, let's go. Shh. Let's do it together, guys. So if that is angle, that is parallel to that. If that is theta, that is theta. We always work with the theta inside the triangle, not outside. The common side, the common side is BD. Rename the common side. So there's a whole lot of sign in here. So the sign rule in triangle two, triangle one, triangle two, I'm, I'm looking at triangle number two first. I'm going to be using the sign rule. So BD, BD over sine alpha will equal to X over sine of this angle. Do we have this angle? Do we have this angle? Yes. This angle is 180 minus alpha plus beta. That angle is 180 minus alpha plus beta. Sum of angles of a triangle. So BD over sine alpha is equal to X over sine 180 minus alpha plus beta. So BD on its own, time sine alpha, time sine alpha, you got X sine alpha, sine 180, the 180 minus will fall away, you left with sine alpha plus beta. There we go, that's triangle number two. Now let's go into triangle number one. Opposite hypotenuse adjacent. I need BD and AD. I need BD and AD. So BD is adjacent. AD is hypotenuse. So that is cos. A and H is cos from Sokatoa. Cos theta is equal to BD over AD. I need AD. I need AD, so AD over BD is equal to 1 over cos theta. So AD is equal to BD over cos theta. But instead of BD, I can put that. Here's my final answer. AD equals, instead of BD, X sine alpha over sine alpha plus beta would be sine alpha cos beta plus sine cos cos sine cos alpha sine beta and cos theta is at the bottom i leave it there there's my final answer bada bing bada boom so we start off triangle two triangle one that was the sign rule, and yeah, I use Sokatoa. Finito. Easy. Easy. Let's see the one that came. Let's do one more. Online ads. Well done, Flex. Well done, Flex. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. 
ايش اي ذي واز وان كويستشن Right, watch here, watch here. Before we do this, right, uh, I want to ask you a higher order question. Let's check who's the boss. Yeah. Shh. Show that in any triangle A, B, C sign a equals sign b cos c plus cos b sin c for four marks they can either ask you to show or they can ask you to prove This is a higher order question. Now, say you got full marks in tricks, then they throw you with something like this to see. Now they want to see who's the Makoya, the real Zamba kid man. Who's the real Makoya? Yo, this is the one in the exam, you know, moving along. Turn the page. You try and make yourself feel better. You say, don't worry, at least I got six out of 10. These four marks, don't worry, won't make me fail. I'll be all right. I will survive. What must be, must be. Every man for himself, God for all. Right, watch here, very easy. Very easy in your answer. Show that in any triangle ABC. So let's call that ABC. Watch here. Is an angle A. Is an angle A is also known as 180 minus B plus C. Sum of angles of a triangle. Yes or no? Guys. Is an angle A known as 180 minus B plus C? Yes or no? And look what they want you to do. Prove that sine A. So sine A, whatever I attach to the left, I need to attach to the right. Yes or no? So now sine A is equal to sine 180 minus. That's a quadrant. It will fall away. I'm left with sine B plus C. And how do I get it like that? That's my compound angle. Here's your final answer. Sine cos, cos sine, B, C, B, C, plus, game over. Okay. Right, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm doing one more. I am doing one more and then we are going into Euclidean. 
I hope you all took this one down. Danko. Hey, I was waiting for that one. Danko. Let's go. Check this one. Uh, they, 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 they. Dot, 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 dot. Peter. P, Q, R, S. That equals that equals X. That's alpha. Show that PQ equals X ten I think it's X or it's 2X. I think it's 2X. All right. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm recalling it from memory. So it could either be X ten beta cos theta or 2X. I think it's 2X. I think it's 2X. I think, I, I think I'm right. Okay, I know I'm right. Let's do it. Woo, PQ, PQ. So if that is beta, pay attention. If that is beta, then that is beta. They tell you that is parallel to that, right? So that's beta, that's beta, alternate angles. If this is x, that is x. That's an isosceles triangle, then that's alpha. This angle here is 180 minus alpha plus alpha. Two alpha. Quiet. We now want to rename the common side. So now I'm going to be using the cos rule. QS squared. QS squared is equal to X squared plus X squared minus 2 into X into X cos of 180 minus 2 alpha. So QS squared x squared plus x squared is 2x squared minus 2x squared cos 180 will be cos 2 alpha 180 minus is in my second quadrant cos is negative negative times as negative is a right good right so that means that's qs squared so QS squared is equal to, I take out 2X squared as my highest common factor. I get 1 plus cos 2 alpha. So QS squared is equal to 2X squared into 1 plus cos 2 alpha. Cos 2 alpha is 2 cos squared alpha minus 1. Double angle. QS squared equals 2X squared into 1 minus 1 is 0. I'm left for 2 cos squared alpha. QS squared is equal to 2 times 2 is 4X squared cos squared alpha. Therefore, QS on its own is the square root of 4X squared cos squared alpha which is QS is equal to, the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of X squared is X, the square root of cos squared alpha is cos alpha. There's a 2, there's a 2, there's a X, there's a X, there's a cos alpha, is it cos alpha? Oh, sorry, this was not cos theta, there was no theta there, cos alpha. Right, there's a cos alpha, there's a cos alpha. 
Right, now we go into triangle. That was triangle number one. Now we go into triangle number two. I need PQ and I need QS. I need PQ and I need QS. That's my opposite hypotenuse adjacent. Opposite over adjacent is tan. So tan beta is equal to PQ over QS. I want PQ on its own. So PQ is equal times QS times QS tan beta. And here's your final answer coming up. Therefore, PQ is equal to, instead of QS, 2X tan beta cos alpha. There's your final answer. This was triangle one. There we go. They tested you your double angle. They just tested you your double angle in this question. There we go. Ah, thank you. <laughs> the whole country is proud of me. Well done, well done, well done. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You could have used sign rule if you wanted to. No problem. I just chose to use the, 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 the cause rule. That's what I saw first. <laughs> Moment, I you can. You ladies are right. Are <laughs> you guys all right? Okay. Ah, now let's see. I want to see how you guys could have messed up the Euclidean. So let's go into... Eish, it's already 2.30. Let's go into the Euclidean. Please, guys, know how... Please make a note. Know the proof of similarity. Proportionality. Sorry. The, with the construction. Guys, according to the National Marking Memo, if you don't show the construction, they tell you straight, mark the whole thing wrong. Give them zero. They're going to give you two triangles, right? Shh. Quiet. Uh, just to show you the proof. Lesson. Lesson. Just to show you, I'm not going to do the whole proof. That's book work. You can go back to school or go back to your... I'm not going to do the proof. The proof is easy. They're going to give you two triangles and they're going to say prove the theorem which states if two triangles are equiangular, that is equal to that, that is equal to that, and that is equal to that. If two triangles are equiangular, then the corresponding sides are in proportion. So prove the theorem which states that if two triangles are equiangular, then the opposite sides in proportion. You have to do, guys, the reason why I'm doing this, you have to show, you've got to construct. You've got to construct that line parallel to that, so that will equal to that, and that will equal to that, and now you can prove that these two triangles are in proportion. Right? I'm just showing you that you have to show the proportionality, you've got to show the construction. If you leave the construction out, you get zero. I'm not going to do this problem with you. I'm going straight into the... This is book work, guys. This is your theorem from your book, from your textbook. Learn it. Learn it. And it was six marks, six marks for Mahala. 
These were your Mahala marks. Yo, such a few learners got it right. Why? All you had to do was just spew it out from your textbook, which you had to learn. Right. Let's go into a grade 11 scenario. Now, that's easy stuff. That's your circle, theorem. Angles in the same segment. Uh, 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 common sides, subtending common angles. Shh. Exterior angle of a cyclic quad e equal to the interior opposite. Diameter subtends at 90 degrees. Line drawn from center to midpoint of a chord meets it at 90 degrees. Exterior angle at center is two times angle at circumference. When the bow tie starts from the center, angle at center is two times angle at circumference. A, di a radius or diameter is always 90 degrees to a tangent. Angle between tangent and chord is always equal to the angle in the alternate segment. Two tangents meeting at a common point are equal to where they touch. You have to know it. How are you going to answer your paper if you don't know your theorems by memory? I don't need to go through that with you. You know that from last year already. Let's go. Let's go. Watch this. This was the question that came out in Gauteng. I'm doing the Gauteng question. Take the circle down. This is the grade 11. This is to do with circle. So let's see. So let's say they have a line going there. Hey. They got a line going there. Oh my word. What does this look like? They got that coming down here. They got this coming down here. Oh my word. They got that going up there. They got this coming down there. They got O is the center of the circle. They got a line going there. They got a line coming straight up. Quiet, guys. They got a line coming straight down from there. They got a line coming right down, going across from there. Ooh, eh, eh. They got stories, these people. And they got that. And they got that. There we go. There's your diagram. X, R, Y, X, R, Y. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. O is the center. T. T1, T2. They tell you that piece is equal to that piece. They tell you this line is parallel to that line. They call that Q1, Q2. They tell you this is P. They tell you this is S, S1, S2, S3. Now, guys, this is was your 12 marks. Shh. Now, listen to me. 12 marks on this, 6 marks on the proof. That's 18 marks. Similarity, a proportionality, another 9. So what was this? Let's just work this out. 12 plus 6 plus 9 plus. I'm, I'm just counting your guaranteed marks. Prove that two triangles are similar, another 4 marks. That gives you 31. Now, guys, let's say I left the two hard ones out at the end. So I would have got 31 marks here. I'm just doing a, a total of this paper. Right, 31. Data handling was a walk in the park, was 10 and 9, was 19 marks. So it's 31 plus 19 plus the analytics we did to get today together. So that was 20 plus 21. Uh, the tricks, 26. The trick functions was a walk in the park, 14. 
And okay, they gave it uh, the 2D tweaks. Maybe we can do that one. Okay, there's another 10 marks there. Equals. Guess how much, guys? You'll get a shock of your life from what we did today. Do you know how much we got for paper two? What do you think? 141 out of 150. We got 94% for the paper without even doing the last proportionality, the heavy one. We're leaving that. Let's say we left that one out. We got 94. You won't be happy with 94. Some of you didn't even get 49, even if you were dyslexic and you turned it around. Leave 94. Right, let's go. Calculate with reason. Right, I want question number one. R O. R O Y is 20 degrees. R O Y, that's 20 degrees. S R O is 10 degrees. Right, question number one. They want S1, they want R3. They want angle P, they want angle S2. 2, 1, 2, 4. 2, 1, 2, 4. Mark allocation. Question number two. Prove that XRY, prove that XRY is a tangent through the circle R, T, and O. And that was for three marks. So two marks, one mark, two marks, four marks, three marks, total 12. Come guys, come guys. Easy marks, boy to mellow. <laughs> bada bing, bada boom. Let's go, S1. Shh. Come on, come on. Look at S1. Here's your bow tie starting from the center. So angle at center is two times angle at circumference. So S1 is equal to 10 degrees. Angle at center. Angle at center equals two times angle at circumference. Hey, so if this is 10 and that is 10 and this is 20 and that is 10, that means that makes that parallel to that. I'm just, shh, they don't ask me to find it, but I'm just checking it out. Right, R3. There's R3. Shh. Quiet, guys. Now we know that a line drawn from a center of a circle to the midpoint, we know that that is 90 degrees. Quiet, quiet, quiet. We know that this line is also parallel to that line. So we know, ah, come on. So R3 is 20 degrees. Alternate, alternate. R3 is equal to 20 degrees. Alternate angles. Which two lines are parallel? RQ is parallel. What was this? Y to YO. Right. P. What angle P? That angle there. Ah, uh, come on. This is. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Here's a cyclic quad. Here's a cyclic quad. There's a cyclic quad. What do we know about opposite angles of a cyclic what? They supplementary, they add up to 180. So P is equal to 180 minus 20 plus 10 is how much? 30, which is equal to 150. Opposite angles of a cyclic what? Opposite angles of a cyclic what? How much is S2? Okay, S2 for four marks, maybe it's got some heavy calculation. Let's see. I don't know. I haven't done it before. We're doing it here together. That's 90. That's 90.
Right, then the last question is prove that x, r, y is a tangent. So come, let's do S2 first. We want S2 for four marks. So this is 150 degrees. We need to get to S2. So we know this angle here is 30 degrees. I need Q2, am I right? What is S3? We don't have S. We got this angle here as 10 degrees. Okay, let's see. There's no angle at center equal to angle at circumference. S2 for four marks. Let's check. Let's check. Let's check. Ah, ah, I see. Right, work it out. I'm seeing something. Let's work through it, guys. Guys, come, come. Apply yourself. Let's see. I'm trying to figure it out here as well. I'm trying to see what do I see here. All right, let's fill out what do we have. We got 20, we got 10. You see, S2 is equal to R4. That's what I see, 10 code. If I get R1, listen, if I get R1, I can do angles on a line, I can get R4, and R4 will equal to S2. So let me see if I can get R1. 10, 20, this is 150. 10 and 20, that's 150. Vertically opposite, that's also 150. Quiet. 300, this is 60 divided by 2. This angle here is 30 degrees. That angle is also 30 degrees. I also know those two lines are parallel. Ninety. I'm working it out here. O two. We got there. O one. O two. Sorry, this is O one. That's O one. That's O two. O one plus O two is ninety. So that's seventy. R one. Come on, guys. Let's see if we can get R1. Is there any other way of getting it? That's 20 degrees. That's 20 degrees. Twenty ten. What am I not seeing here? I need to get R1, guys. I need to get R1. Oh, 
or I can get angle Y. Go. Ah, come on. The last one here. This one here is. I need to get to R1. Twenty ten. What am I not seeing here? I'm not seeing something. I'm going to give it two more minutes. I'm going to give it two more minutes. If I don't see it, unfortunately, I'm going to leave it out. No, I'm lying. I'll never leave it out. I will never, I will never accept defeat. I will never accept defeat. We got 20, we got 10. Yeah. Ah, I see it. Stupid me. I see it. Right. This is a radius. A radius is 90 degrees. Right. So, oh, uh, don't say yes. When I was suffering and sweating, you weren't helping me. OR is 90 degrees to XY. Radius 90 degrees to tangent. Therefore, R4 is equal to R4 is 70. Therefore, angle S2 is 70. 10 chord. Maybe you guys gave me the answer there, but I didn't see it and I won't check it. All right, that would. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't see it, man. I didn't see it. Okay, now I saw it. Now I saw it. All right. You see, I'm proving to you I'm not using the memo. Can you see how I'm sweating on this bald head? <laughs> My head looks like a whisper. <laughs> right, let's go. Prove that XRY is a tangent. X. RY is a tangent to the circle RTO. 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 Oh, okay. Ten chord. O2 is all this year is also 70, right? Sum of angles of a triangle. So angle O2 is equal to 70 degrees. Sum of uh, angles of a triangle. Which triangle? RTO. And angle R4 is equal to 70. Proven above. Therefore, XRY. XRY is a tangent. The converse of the 10 chord theorem. There we go. That's 70 and that's 70, the converse of the 10 chord theorem. I hope you all got that. Ish, ah, it's 10 2. It's not 3 o'clock. Don't lie. Well done, Collins. Well done, well done, well done, well done, well done. I I don't. I don't have the memo. I swear, Nipo. Mudimu. I don't. I don't. 
This memo is for paper. This one here is paper one. That's the only one I got. Here's the paper. Nothing else here. You can see. Show the camera here, Taya. Show the camera. No memo. Right. Converse of 10 court theorem. I swear I don't have the memo here, guys. This is paper one. There's it. We are only working through this paper here. Sure. Okay. It's time to sweat now. Let's clear the frame. Last one before we finish. Come. Right. Let's do this one. Right, take this down. D, C, Right. SA equals 80 millimeter. Right. In the diagram, triangle ABC is constructed. BC is produced to D. DR is drawn. What point T on AC? Right. CS is drawn. CT equals 12. TA equals 36. SR equals 20. SA equals right. Right. Question number one. Prove. Prove. That C S is parallel to T R. Question number two. Further given, guys, we at the end. Further given that A R is equal to two over three R B, and C D is equal to a half X plus one. Solve for X. Find the value, solve for x. Three marks and six marks. Three marks, six marks, total nine. Woo! Sweating, Baba, sweating. We got last five minutes. They make me sweat, this one. Right. Quiet, 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 quiet. Let's see. Huh. They tell us this is 80 and that part is 20. So 80. Hey, guys. Thank you. 80 minus 20 is 60. So obviously, prove that CS, CS is parallel to TR. So this, in this big triangle here, watch here, in the big triangle here. So I'm answering question number one, AR is equal to 60. So now you can say CT over 80 is equal to 12 over 36. You can also say SR over AR is equal to 20 over 60. Now. 12 over 36 is 1 over 3. 20 over 60 is 1 over 3. The opposite sides are in proportion. Opposite sides in proportion. Therefore, CS is parallel to TR. The converse of the proportionality theorem. Right, quiet. We're on the last one, guys. We're on the last one. we got four minutes left. 
That's our first three marks. A R A R is two over three R B is two over three R B. A R is equal to two over three R B. So A R over R B equals two over three. A R over R B is two over three. C D equals half X plus one. C D equals a half X plus one. Find the value of X. My word. Oh, and they tell you that BC is equal to 2X. They also tell you that BC is equal to 2X. So where's BC? BC is equal to 2X. Okay, so I'm erasing all of that. Solve for X. Find the value of X. That's A T. So A R over R B. A R over R B. Ah. Ah. These two lines are parallel. I'm now going to look in triangle B D R. In triangle B D R. This line. Watch. Shh, quiet. Guys, we're almost done. Relax. Calm your farm. That. I'm looking at this triangle G. Okay, okay, okay. Right, guys, we're finishing up now. I know your buses are here and you guys need to leave. I'm looking at that triangle there. I'm looking at that triangle there. Guys, this over this is equal to that over that. And all we need to do now is solve for X. Call that now remember, if this is 2x, this is also 2x. If that is 2x, guys, I know your buses are here. Sorry, I know we got to cut this thing short. That is 2x because that is 2x. That over that equals this over that. So BS over RS is equal to BC over CD. And now, so 2x over 20 is equal to 2x over half x plus 1. Now, you just, all you do is you solve for x. Proportionality theorem. Guys, that brings us to the end of the program. We are 3 o'clock on the dot. There's buses here that are waiting from Ulaji District. So, I know everybody's going to leave. I would have left with you guys another half an hour, another 45 minutes. Unfortunately, our time is up. Lots of love, guys. Ibrahim, Abbasis, we don't have the time. I'd love to. I already showed you how to get 95 for paper one. Unfortunately, we didn't have enough time to finish probability from today. I just want to thank everybody. I want to thank uh, Mr. Kathy from uh, the South. Uh, Okaf, South Africa, big up to us today, and Tahia, Jazakallah, you guys have been amazing. There's Mr. Gathry. We love you guys a lot. I'd love to sit here till 5 o'clock, but uh, unfortunately, we need to finish up. Thank you guys. Lots of love from us. Jazakallah for all you onlineers, the 10,000 learners that have, that have joined us. Okaf, South Africa, Hassanein and Tahia to, for making this possible. Uncle Zainul Kaji, Mr. Zafar Ahmed from Al Falah College, 
that has allowed us the usage of this venue and the Department of Education that has allowed that has allowed us uh, or allowed all the learners from all the different districts in in KZN uh, to make this program possible. Amara Khan, Jazakallah so much, always a pleasure. Inshallah, destination, distinction, Tato Tekiso. You know what we are aiming for. We're aiming for 100% in our final exam. From from me, Mr. K, from the K-Way Institute, lots of love. Catch you guys on TV. Catch you guys on the YouTube and on the OKA platforms. And lots of love. Our du'as are with you. Keep us in your du'as. Lots of love coming here from uh, KZN and from K-Way. Assalamu Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So we will mute Mr. Kota there. So we'll just round up on our side. I've had a lot of fun. I've been in the back end. So here has been the, the our anchor today. has been driving the program, doing lots of the technical things. So we definitely had fun. A big shout out. Stands of fun. Yes, Mr. Catherine, Mr. Kota, Mr. Zephyr from Alphala. But a very big mention to Mr. Catherine. We've had a fair share of challenges and we're very appreciative for him for making things happen. Thank you so much from my side until the next time. And then um, I think Mr. Catherine also wants to say something. Let's, let's, let's get him on there. Let me see if we can unmute him. I think he's muted. Uh, we can't seem to unmute him. Let's see. We got him. Mr. Kathery, unmute yourself so we can speak to the greatness. Okay. So, today, yeah, it's over to you. Uh, you can do the oh, official vote. Thanks. Take it away. Um, one second. Just... Okay. Okay. There's some sort of echo coming in. There we go. All right, on behalf of Akaf South Africa, I'd like to thank all of you students for joining in. We wish you all the best for your upcoming exams. Don't forget to um, submit your results in the new year once we send you the email with competition. Um, special thanks to all the teachers, all the participants, Mr. Zafar Ahmed from Alfala, um, Mr. Kota and the K-Way Institute for facilitating an awesome two days. I had so, so much of fun just joining in. Um, and also to Mr. Faisal Kathri from Kathri Sounds. So that's it. That's where we conclude. That's where we're going to end our stream. Thank you so much to the participants that have... Uh, been um, giving questions, their suggestions, their feedback, and Sorry. also keeping Mr. Kota on the on the toes. As I see a few comments about the document, we will make sure that it's shared, and I'm sure Hassan will even send out an email link once it's posted. That's correct. We will be sending. We lost you for a moment there. Hasnain, are you there? Nope, muted. In the stream now. There we go. All right. Okay, so that's where we... Um, that's Love where you we and leave you. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys. The next one, we'll be hosting a grade 10 workshop in Cape Town. Log on to the OCAF website. And that will have some more information about that. So from myself and the awesome effervescent Tahir, assalamu alaikum, good, uh, good afternoon, and all the best for your final exams. Bye, guys. When we take care of each other, wonderful things happen. Children thrive, the elderly rejoice, and communities celebrate. OCAF South Africa, a charitable WACAF organization, makes it easy to share the care. All donations are plowed into Sharia compliant investments, while the fruits support a wide variety of charitable causes. Visit okafsa.org.za to discover how your wakaf 
can blaze alchemy 